Man, I like that intro music. It's good stuff. <laughs> okay. So, welcome to <clears throat> FMA Talk Live. This is Dr. Tim and my co-host. Did you guys here? Welcome. All right. So, uh, our guest is working on getting in. So, um, today is going to be, as uh, Eric has pointed out, Eric from Portland. Obviously, didn't go to the gym today because he wanted to make this show. Excellent. That This is the double Datu impact. So, mm -hmm. um yeah, so I'm my oh, and our our guest is right there. I see him. I'll I'll bring him in right here. So I know he's got a limited schedule. So with no further ado, from uh, the SeaTac, uh, Seattle, uh, Tacoma, Washington area, Datu Kelly Warden. So, oh man, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> you guys got me on. Okay, I know you're getting your things going there. I so it. I got it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, How you doing? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just got out of the shop. You know, knives are the most important thing to me these days. <laughs> I'm trying to get that one ready for uh, to send out to a guy out of Canada. So, cool. You know, it's just uh, yeah, and tech stuff uh, isn't my gig. So, yeah, you, know. It, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. Um, so we're going to be talking about the topic. I know Kelly's got a, a, a limited schedule today, so we're going to see how what we can get in. So I'm really yeah, I got an hour, an yeah. hour. I'm going to knock out some things here, and you tell me if I got this right. Uh, and of course, my furry sidekicks are uh, are going a little crazy here. So, um, oh, you know, I'm going to mute the mic here. Hold on. No, that's all right. Doesn't real. bother me. Leon's right at the bottom of my feet, so he'll probably sing in. You know, so. All right. So, uh, Ty, why don't you take over for a moment? Sure, yeah. Well, welcome. I'm glad you could make it. Uh, uh, we have actually never met, right? Hey, Ty. Well, you know, I've seen you on uh, yeah, on video and things like that. So, I guess, you know, there's so many people and the Internet is like that. Hey, man, I know you. That's right, you know, exactly. It's like, okay. Uh, well, in some sense, we're uh, – in, uh, in my mind, we're related, obviously, for, for martial arts. But you know, I don't sure. know if you knew. I was born in uh, – uh, and of course, Washington. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so local exactly. boy. Local exactly. boy. There you go. Yeah. It was a while ago. But anyway, yeah. yeah. And you both like bikes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's true, man. I'm uh, looking at one right now, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. And then Dean Franco says hello to everyone. Hey, Dean. Hey, what well, you? what's going on, Dean? Yeah. I know he was trying to do something with modern art, and East. I just haven't heard from him. So He's, maybe he doesn't. Well, Oh, well, actually, <laughs> well, Dean, there you go. Um, <laughs> there's the segue you've been waiting for. Um, so let me let me knock this out real quick. So for those who haven't, who who may not have, uh, who travel in different circles, may not know much about uh, Datu Warden here. Let's start off the back. The first American Datu. Okay. So we got the bookends here. He was the first. I was the last. That's kind of cool. Um Knife maker and designer. Uh, the War Tech is one of the most popular designs I've seen out there. Um, and when Kelly and I first met, he actually gave me one, a uh, Timberline version. Um, you uh, Impact Karambit, uh, which is, is that also nicknamed the Travel Wrench? Yeah, yeah. We did that for covert reasons. Yeah, and then you've got a straight yeah. version of that too, right? Yeah, there's a Safety Wrench safety and, wrench. Then, uh, and then the Palm Wrench. And palm Wrench, okay. Yeah. The silent fighter. Yeah. I'm okay, working on you... four of those right now, man. So uh yeah. think Wing Chung dummy to the next generation. Yeah. Um, let me see here. You were a contributor for Full Contact magazine. Sure. One Fighting the Knives. Yeah. yeah. Fighting Knives. You're one of the featured uh, talent for um Paladin Press for videos. Actually their first breakaway into I guess we're mainstream guys, so yeah. There you go. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of all the other things. Uh, you actually now, I don't know what you're doing with it as of late because I, you know, things changed since COVID. But um, probably the longest running actual training camp where people go camping. Yeah, 42 years of uh, water and steel. What well, was Warrior Retreat in Eastern Washington, uh, Mission Ridge? And uh, then we went uh, to Tanglewood Island, and then we found Raft Island. So 
you know, uh, Tanglewood, you had to take the boat out there, and mm -hmm. there was really torrential tides when the when the tides changed. So you had to kind of, you know, do, do Doctor Han type of thing and uh, <laughs> time time the uh, travel. Uh, but now we got a little bridge out to Raft Island, so that's that's perfect. You know. So. Are you still doing the camp? Yeah, yeah, it's coming up uh, Labor Day weekend every year. I don't know how that started. I, I believe that, uh, you know, Laura Warden, uh, my first <laughs> wife, that was her weekend off. And so we just started doing it that way. And everybody had a four-day week uh, mm -hmm. weekend. So, yeah, I've just kept it that, uh, that date. So, okay. yeah. So let me hear. I'll just catch up with some people. So Chaz, <clears throat> Chad Bailey says hello from Florida. Hey, Chad. And then D definitely dot to Kelly S. Warden. Yes, let's do it. Um, so obviously there you go. Um, <clears throat> Frank Schakowsky says hello from uh, Connecticut, Middletown. Uh, Romeo Bravo says hello. Um, you know, uh, amazing martial artist, highly respected. GM Kelly's a solid human being. All right. Uh, and then uh, Kurt. How's it from Homer, Alaska? Oh, stop it. Um, looking forward to coming down to water to steal in September. And, and then Darren from Philadelphia says, hello. There you go. All right. So, Ty, why don't you take over? So, I, obviously, I need to take care of somebody here. This is usually the first half hour of the show. So, I don't want to waste time because I know you only have a limited amount of time. But so, yeah, the, the theme is how do we get to the Pacific Northwest? Yeah, so let's go ahead and dive right into it if you're ready. Sure, man. Yeah, no so, spot. yeah so uh, if you were going to start somewhere, I'll leave it, I'll put it in your court. Where, you know, where would you start if you're telling the story about how uh, Remy got started up there in the Pacific Northwest? Oh, wow. You know, well, that would have been Professor Leonard Trigg. Uh, I don't know if he was having the professor title then. Uh, we've known each other 43 years or 44 or something like that. So I was with Cooey Broca. And at that time, uh, Ernest, uh, uh, Professor Trigg was with Ernesto. So that was the connection. And Trigg rolled up to uh, our training uh, facility at that time. And he was selling some sticks. He opened his 69 Chevy trunk and it was full to the rim. And I kid you not, there must have been a thousand sticks in there. Oh, and I went crazy. I was like, oh, well, you know, feel, touch, handle, twirl, you know. And right. we just hit it off from there. But yeah, he was the first to bring Ernesto in, and uh, Grandmaster Estalusa, Roberto even came in at that point in time. And uh, somewhere along the line, he uh, hooked up with Ramey as well and brought Ramey into uh, the Portland area and Ernesto, uh, Ernesto too. So that would have probably been in the late 70s. And uh, Trigg was one, he was a uh, Oregon police officer, head of tactics and training. Uh, and so he, he was traveling back and forth to the Philippines, paid for by law enforcement agency. And uh, so, yeah, that was, that was kind of how that worked. And uh, Professor Trigg and I have been friends ever since. Uh, I stayed with, uh, with uh, uh, Kui Broca until 82. At that point in time, I switched over to Ramey. Uh, I'd seen him actually in like 81. Ed Lewis, uh, my uh, Kung Fu teacher at that time, uh, kind of a, progressive JKD format, former Ishin Ru. Uh, I started with him in Ishin Ru and, uh, but he was, uh, his mom was Filipino and she would always chase us out of the house going, she was going to scream at us, you know? And I was like, oh, well, I'm screaming, get, get her away from us, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that was kind of my first breakaway into Filipino Arnis. It wasn't structured, but we were doing Sinwali and stick tricks like Kaji Kembo did. And then from there, you know, Kui had came into the area. I had my gym down on uh, uh, Ruston, Ruston, Washington, uh, with Sugar Ray Seals when Seals was still fighting pro. So mm -hmm. he would be pretty much there doing the boxing daytime stuff. Uh, and then I, I took over the evening classes or the evening facility, uh, did all our training in a boxing ring. Uh, you know, so it was 
kind of a rough and tumble type of thing. But uh, so, yeah, I started with Ramey late 82, early 83. And, uh, you know, he was uh, really cordial and he was excited uh, because I had Cooey's system. I was a first Don or Antis. Uh, you know, I don't do a lot of terminology. I, I figure if I can't order uh, Filipino food or Chinese food or Japanese food without pictures, you know, I, I, I don't go too deep into the terminology, but yeah, you know, so Raymond was just a great guy. He said, Oh, that, that is part of my system. You already have it, you know? So uh, it worked out really well. So, and you know, Datu Dieter was, uh, one of Cooey's longtime students too. Right. So as well as Ernesto. So, you know, family issues and family business there with the Prices brothers, you know. <laughs> so nice. good to see you back, Tim. Yeah, he's still, I heard the whole thing, but enough, unfortunately, <laughs> the knucklehead is still barking. Still, yeah, yeah. Janice came home. So, of course, now, you know, it's that whole thing. Well, I'm surprised Leon isn't responding because he's laying right here by my feet. So, like, hey, there's a dog. What do you have? What is Leon? I don't think it's... Oh, uh, Staffordshire. Oh, nice. Yeah, Bull Terrier. There he is right there. Okay, buddy. I see you. Yeah, I got, I, I got a small puppy. He's he's a Rottweiler. He's only 170. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> Staffies, uh, Staffies are kind of all muscle, and uh, you know, but they're they're knee high at, at the very best, you know. But, yeah, on, he'll man. he'll roll with anybody though. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Dogs. Good. Yep. Nice. So we. So when, anyway, uh, what's going on? Yeah, so uh, so actually, uh, let's go on further with that if you don't mind. Um, sure. So so you met Remy then, and would he come in often, or or would or would uh, Prince yeah, you know, in or? Well, actually, uh, by in '83 or so, you know, uh, then it was uh, Fred King bringing him into the Academy of Kung Fu. Then I would bring him here to Washington. Then he'd go to Vancouver. So it was kind of one of those things. Once he hit the West Coast. You know, my goal was I would go down uh, to to see him in in Oregon. Then he'd come. Well, we had the Evergreen College course in Olympia. That was a summer camp, and then from there I'd pick him up, or he'd hang out with me for a few days, and we'd drive up to Vancouver and do that. Shashir was in Vancouver at that time, and uh, so was uh, Fred Shady and, and a few of the the other guys in that region. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I try to try to hook up with him when he was in Oregon and drive up the coastline with him. And uh, yeah, interesting, interesting times. He was quite the gypsy, right? Well, I remember <laughs> I, I I've only driven with him a few times for a few short mm -hmm. trips, um, but uh, those were always good visits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Long time, uh, you know, nonstop conversation for the most part. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Romeo Bravo wanted to know, was Ernesto a long-haul truck driver and Guru John Daniels, how did uh, they come together? Now, was there another Ernesto you mentioned when you were talking when I had to walk out or just? Uh, no, just no, Price? it's just Ernesto. Yeah. yeah. Ernesto, Ernesto was uh, not a long-haul. <laughs> he, was, he was not a driver. No. He was a visitor. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, JD, uh, JD's associate with him. Uh, it was a long time one. I remember that. I mean, and I've known JD for years and years. Uh, he trained with Kurt Goodwin and uh, some of my other students down there. Um, and Kurt was uh, one of Janessa Cruz's students before he jumped ship and uh, came into uh, natural spirit. You know, mm -hmm. Janessa Cruz's group was women with heart. So I don't know. Uh, how Kurt fit into that, but uh, there were a few guys in that group. So, okay. but uh, all talented women and uh, great practitioners. Okay. And then uh, oh. John uh, JD uh, uh, John says, "I know JD. He met uh, met Fred King as well." Okay. Uh, sure. And then uh, Coach Danny Terrell uh, from PQ Tertiary says, "Good evening." He's hey. uh, he is from uh, Louisiana. Okay. And then, yeah. uh, let's see, I know Kurt Goodwin as well. Okay, good, good, good. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, um, who was the first one to host the camps up that way? Well, I would say 
hosting. Well, you know, you mean Olympia yeah, sure. Evergreen? Yeah, I, I guess Evergreen. Was I, first camp. I, you know, that was first camps I was attending. Okay. You know, but there were weekend events and at Fred King's Academy of Kung Fu. Yeah. That was a very big uh, facility. I think it was an old you know, local neighborhood supermarket when he transitioned it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So those, those were pretty big. I mean, 60, 65 people, something like that, you know? And, uh, yeah. And Fred, uh, that's when, that's when Dan was coming into those. And, uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, uh, Barbara Bones, uh, Wendy Dragonfire, they were two of the regulars there. I'm not sure what their organization was called at that point in time. But like I said, I know <clears throat> Janessa was women with heart and, uh, but you know, mostly Kaji Kembo. Those were Kaji Kembo base and then whatever their club names were, that type of thing. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I met, uh, Janessa up, uh, on one of the trips I went up there, um, after professor passed, um, I talked to, um, Wendy periodically, Wendy Dragonfire via Facebook. Uh, sure. But she, but she had already moved before. She, I mean, she's over in Amsterdam right now, so I don't. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't come into contact with her until after she had left. But um, yeah. <clears throat> so um. So so you we got Fred King. We got you. Uh, well, Dan was there. Dan started rolling in there. Right, he he right. uh he kind of hesitated. Uh, you know, probably when Professor was just rolling into uh, that area, wasn't much interested in our niece. And of course, once he got turned on to it, he was like, "Oh my God, what the hell's this?" You know. Uh, so you know, there was a lot of that early on, uh, late seventies, early eighties. I believe Dan uh, State City started with Ramey in nineteen eighty. So yeah, we weren't real good friends back then. You know, it's just uh, kind of a weird, weird situation. We could talk a little bit about it. You know, I mean, he wrote it in his book. Uh, I haven't really read everything he, he wrote, but uh, he talked a little bit about our disagreements. And, uh, you know, and that's an interesting story because that's how the Dachu title came in. You know, it's just like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, so, but however you guys want to go, continue. <laughs> Leon, well, we, we can talk want? about the Datsu title there. That, that'd be an interesting uh, topic on this. I mean, I, we'll segue a little, but I'd like to get back sure. on a couple of things and see if you sure. had any other questions. But um, when you said the Datsu thing, how, so. How'd that work? Yeah. I mean, how'd it work, uh, how'd it work out your way? Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Well, you know, uh, Bob Anderson, I don't know if you guys know Bob, but he's been at my camps for 44, 45 years, something like that. And then uh, Jim Keating is, as well. Okay. Later on, Joe Simonette, and then just some other guys, uh, Alec Corper from Amsterdam and uh, Marcus Houston from uh, Scotland. So, uh, you know, Mick, uh, God, Mick Nichols out of Australia. So anyway, we kind of had our pretty good group of highly skilled guys. And uh, so, I wasn't really worried about a, a black belt or a rank, but I did test early on and got the advanced instructor certification from Ramey. And, uh, you know, so I was just letting my students do the do testing and I didn't really care. I had Shotokan and Ishinru and combat our knees and uh, a few things like that. I said, uh, you know, belts don't, uh, protect me in my environment so let's just move mm -hmm. on i i was just excited to see an art that allowed me to integrate just about anything like mm -hmm. the old kind of joke ongoing joke what was number one mm -hmm. you know and uh you know so it's all number one or it's all number two you know that type of thing and uh so apparently at the olympia camp i let my students test i I ain't going to say I changed the Anyo. I interpret it differently. And uh, so there was kind of a, an argument where they held, we didn't do it like they wanted to do it. But I could 
number a lot of the guys down there that were influenced with different kinds of kung fu and different arts that expressed it differently either softer or harder that type of thing mm -hmm. and uh so uh, you know rami is like hey uh you know they're upset that uh you're not testing i mm -hmm. said I, I don't feel any need to test. I'm here for your concepts and your methodology of how you teach. Mm -hmm. And that really intrigued, intrigued me. And I really didn't want to be bound up by having to change my curriculum at my school. Like I said, we trained in a kickboxing ring or a, a boxing ring. And uh, at that point in time, we did a lot of catch wrestling and pretty much MMA stuff. Uh, early on, that was 1983. So, you know, uh, I was running WKA, World Kickboxing Association, uh, for state of Washington, training referees and being the state director of that program. Uh, so anyway, so Ramey's like, hey, uh, you know, they're upset that you won't test. I said, it ain't that I won't test. It's just that I'm not testing. If they want to test me, tell them to step out on the floor with a stick or a knife. This doesn't have to be about sparring. I'll match my curriculum with anybody there, you know. And, you know, really, let's test your shit out on the floor. And uh, so, you know, I, and so as we continued on, we got back to my house. And, you know, Ramey decided it was time to test me to a degree. And I was like, oh, well, you know, okay, if that's where it at, it's at. And it got pretty tangled in, pretty rough. And at the same time, you know, I was just like, you know, I just oversee the progression. That's why a lot of these guys came to me for, you know, even Cooey's Arnie's because there wasn't a structured Arnie's method. I said, then I found yours. I says, so I'm just overseeing a lot of guys and I'm blending what they have into their Kaja Kimbo, into their Gojo, into their Shotokan, into their Taekwondo. And he goes, oh my God, you know, you are right. You're Da too. And I was like, what's that? And he goes, uh, you know, you are chieftain. You know, you are, you are head of, head of your own tribe. I like, uh, I don't understand. He goes, well, you talk to Shashir about that. You know, so that was it, man. It was, uh, I says, well, what's a dot too? And he goes, you're a chieftain. You're, you're a ruler of your own group. And I was like, okay. I, I said, you know, what rank is that? He says, you give rank. Don't worry about what rank. I was like, okay, well, I do that anyway. So yeah, I'm good with that. So it was very, uh, relaxed so to speak other than shocking mm. you know i surely didn't want the title because you know, i say it without being uh, radical I, i'm a white dude i don't you know i don't do that mm. and uh i just ran a gym so my school was a gym and we taught martial arts so i wasn't overly concerned about any of that but it was bastilio and Lukey Lukey and uh, Sonny Umpod and uh, different Professor Trigg that said I must honor it and accept it and do it. You know, I can't say that uh, anybody along the West Coast that was also involved in modern Arnie's agreed with it. As a matter of fact, when we came to the next camp and my students were signing up, they signed their instructor as Da too, and they stopped the camp had a meeting in the back room and pretty much did everything except for throw me under the physical bus. So, you know, uh, I, I worked through it. I mean, you know, it, it lasted for, I don't know, 10 years, hmm. you know? So, and I don't know, Ramey announced me, Oh, bring the tattoo out. Hmm. You know, and then Rick Jornala showed up. That was interesting, too. So then we had Shashir, myself, and, you know, Rick Jordan showed up. We could talk about that one. That was a good part of the story. But oh. anyway, I, I want to let you guys chat a little bit. So what's your thoughts on anything you've already heard? Well, lots of good history, for one thing. But uh, I, I know we got a, a visitor who wants to say hi. Okay. Oh, hold on here. You may know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Rocky Passwick says, Hey, hi, Rocky. And he goes, uh, The quality of your students and peers do more than validate you, Kelly. I uh, appreciate that. And that's Danny, that's 
That's a hundred percent. Danny yeah. Terrell says politics sucks. Yes, they do. Yes, they I mean do. that's where the rubber meets the road, right? I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, uh, I put my stuff out on the floor, out on video. Always have. Uh, so, you know, and, and the critics, how I challenge them is, hey, you know what? I do everything on a nickel and a dime while raising a lot of kids and a lot of grandchildren and taking care of a big group of uh, students, young men now who are running their own gyms, <clears throat> but they were troubled youths, a lot of them Filipino. Mm. And I just let them clean the gym, let them train for free. I call them scholarships. So I've got a whole town of T-Town kids that are now, you know, bringing their kids and maybe grandkids mm -hmm. just to meet me you know but uh, a lot of them were amazing amazing fighters highly skilled they're running their own gyms and uh, you know I mean Bel the belt and luba story is a great story too but uh, where were we on rick jornalis i mean mm -hmm. uh, that, that's that's uh, you know and he did excuse me he did get the the third dot two title you know and so that's a that's a great story but you guys probably got a couple other questions and just remind me about Rick. Oh, Rick's good people. He's kind of, he went a different direction though. Oh Before, yeah. Yeah. He went, he had a, he had a divorce and ugly. Sure. Thing took him exactly. Out of, yeah. Took him out yeah of that. No. And, and you know, and that's, you know, uh, that's the pro. you know, unfortunately a lot of times people forget about the big picture. Uh, yeah. martial arts does, I mean, martial arts does a lot for us, but at the end of the day, it's family first, you know? Yeah, um, exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah. No. No, I, and, and my martial arts family is my family kind yeah. of thing, you know? Yeah. So I've only ran a couple of commercial schools. Most of them I've considered to be gyms. And uh, my last commercial school was 2005. Um, and at that point in time, I was training for special forces. So a lot of how... I, it was just difficult for me to do everything that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, hey, I can't run this commercial school and be responsible for that level, you know. Uh, so I just transitioned back into a small building mm -hmm. and pretty much kind of made it closed doors. If, if I didn't know you or you didn't have an entry or somebody recommended. Uh, and I let my students choose who gets promoted. You know, people come to me for rank all the time. And I goes, well, my students promote you because there's no guarantee how long I'll be here. Hmm. And they have to be the ones that put up with you in 10 years or 20 years when you're ne when you're dropping my name. Hmm. So, yeah. So I let my students make those choices, <laughs> you know, and it's easier to wash the wash the questionable attitudes and things like that outside you know, as because I like everybody for the most part, or I dislike them. One of the two. <laughs> well, it gets them to own part of it too, so that's awesome. It, it, yeah, I'm digging here, listening to you too, talk about your students and their programs and and things like that. To me, that shows where your heart is, and and I love that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've always, I've always, I've always painted cars and did uh, stuff like that. When I stopped painting cars, I painted motorcycles and uh, murals and custom work, flame jobs, mm -hmm. things like that, graphics. And so I was never depending on martial arts as a career or financial stability. So that was kind of how that worked. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Chad Bailey <clears throat> said from Florida, uh, Kelly's programs are fantastic. I really enjoyed integrating his Sabat info uh, with what I do. Yeah. Well, the Sabat was part of the, the Datu thing was, uh, you know, I showed Professor, uh, gosh, you know, I, this is funny too. I brought down this uh, like coat rack, mm -hmm. you know, and I had Arnie's, you know, and they're kind of tripod stand, right? And, uh, you know, hats and coats, it's got all these things. I took those off and put uh, rattan bows and sticks all over it and then rack a tack tack and you hit it too hard. I put some padding on it too, nothing big, but just enough to take the ting out of the metal stand. And uh, so you hit it hard, it starts to fall over. And, you know, and these guys were laughing at me at the Olympia camp. And I was like, oh, well, you see, 
nobody's going to stand still and take a beating. So the dummy don't stand still either. Mm -hmm. So as you hit it, next thing you know, you hook behind it with a abanico or a palace type of energy and you pull it back into you. Now you got this dummy thing that's fly, you know and then of course Ramy got over there and started doing redondos on it and stuff oh my god well then everybody wanted to touch it you know <laughs> so it was, as soon as it was endorsed by the old man and you know it all originated by watching sticks of death with roland dante's well, when grandpa made that coconut head those sticks and Dante's running through the jungle, and then that was part of his challenge match was beat the coconut head man up, you know. So that was kind of what I was doing, originating something to hit, and uh, that's how the Silent Fighter was made. So that was kind of a cool Well, and actually, know, I was just about to ask stuff. if that had a tie in there, so that's cool. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. Yeah, uh, but, 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 you know, it became bigger. I, I created a big pole like a bagua pole and buried it in the ground and then added things to it then somebody said hey can you make me one of those and you know, i think one of the first ones i made was for taki kimura so you know yeah yeah and i made one for jesse as well and yeah wow crazy stuff <laughs> okay, so uh, here we go rocky has uh Family, uh, family and life can have a toll on the martial artist. It's good to see Remy's people coming together more. Um, well, you know, but this, and, and we've had a, a bunch of modernist people back on this show, which is great because from different groups, different lineages per se. Sure. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Kurt, uh, I had the great pleasure to demo with Kelly Warden at the West Coast Blint Walk in August. It was a powerful mm -hmm. moment for me. I uh, appreciate that, Kurt. You know, <laughs> that was a couple good times actually up there. This last time I was teaching knife, uh, you know, I'm not going to try to compare my stick to Bobby's. He does something that's special, amazing, great energy, great personality. What a what a cool dude. I know that uh, Ramey's smiling down on him. I can remember when Bobby just came into the United States and pretty much Ramey said, hey, I'm giving him Erwin uh, Carmichael. I'm giving him North Carolina. And uh, I says, well, the weather will suit him well there. You know, I can't take North Carolina too often. But, uh, yeah, so, no, uh, Bobby's a great guy, and I I'm grateful that he asked me to, to teach knife. And, yeah, I had a good time, man. Had a good time. Nice, so nice. I think Belton was hosting that one at that time. Or John Soriano. John's an amazing guy, too. Uh, what a great technician. Yeah, we, we love uh, hanging with John. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Josh is cool. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so. Oh, let me see here. Yeah, it was at Belden's gym. Okay, Belden's gym. Okay, yeah. very good. All right, here, well, let's go to that uh, Rick Bongson thing. You know, so Rick yeah. shows up at Olympia, and, you know, he brings in these huge bags, and you know, he starts un un <laughs> yeah, un unpacking them down, and uh, Ramey's like, oh, no, let's do this later. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, Datu, why don't you take Rick out to the field? And so I carried the bags out there. Like, okay, well, he's a guest here. And mm -hmm. So I carried the bags out there. We unload them, and he's, uh, you know, twirling. I mean, he's just an amazing technician, great showman, really. And, uh, you know, I so... I said, well, what are you doing? He's like, you know, hit, 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 hit. No, 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 no. This is this. This is that. This is this. This is that. Mm -hmm. And so we had a great exchange, and I pretty much manhandled not all the weapons because there's some things I just don't do. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I went from commas to size to spear and broadsword. And mm -hmm. so I stay within the the main elements of uh, of technical elements from uh, sword and stick and knife and double stick and the spear. And uh, so then we're coming back and Rick's carrying them. And Ramey's like, oh, what is this? When you leave, you are carrying the weapons. And uh, when you come back, uh, he is carrying the weapons. I said, well, he found out who the real dot two was. And uh, <laughs> Ramey just kind of snickered. Then we went down to North Carolina. And the same thing kind of occurred. Rick got out there to do his demo, and I just jumped in, alternating. 
and literally took all the weapons. Like if I'm doing Kama, well, I might as well be Anyo, Anyo Isa, Anyo Delawa, Anyo Tato, Tatlo, and then some improvisational stuff that lead from there where Rick was just doing his, his performance levels. And, uh, you know, great to watch, man. I mean, I wish I had his flexibility, but he's not 230. So mm -hmm. I, I can accept the fact that, no, I'm not uh, totally flexible. But, geez, Rick's a serious Gumby kind of guy. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, great technician, had a good time. We had a great time down in North Carolina at, uh, at uh uh Irwin's sorry yeah at Irwin's place so yeah now he's a sheriff or something isn't he or is oh, he's he... retired now I think is he okay yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he was running for mayor at one time or, or okay or... yeah yeah he was a fireman when I was down there and then he went uh, for sheriff and yeah and then I think he was running for councilman or yeah. regional congressman or something like that so yeah yeah so that that was the the story on rick but uh it was good to you know i think we got a couple pictures of rick uh shishir and myself and uh you know so that was fun to you know experience that early on and then Dieter was the fourth one in line um uh, and that pretty much came from uh, his association to Ernesto, uh, you know, another political jump that Ramey did to, uh, I don't know, put Ernesto in his place, so to speak. But, you know, those are better well, left uh, to told by that, Dieter. I, I think <laughs> yeah. Dieter had already left, uh, had already left um, Ernesto. Ernesto. And, uh, and as I was explained, I mean, if anyone had a tribe, it was Dieter. I mean, he had a huge tribe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Let's talk. Oh, see, Rocky. Uh, Kelly, your Rick story is similar to the Blintwalk story I had involved with him back in 1985 or 86, before Blintwalk was really heard of in the U.S. We'll have to talk soon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, what's yeah, this? Yeah. Um, Tim and Ty. Is that? I don't My know bye bye It's not that good. I can't read it. I just get blocks in front of me, so oh, oh, it's, it's oh, oh, no, 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 no. That was our. That was our. Um, that's our uh, Filipina uh, tour guide. Oh, okay. When, when I went to Negros, she keeps uh, changing the name now all the time. Okay, that's why. Right. Her and her sister are in the photo there. Okay. Nice. Asked me recently. Recently, if I was going to be in, they thought I was in the Philippines. I'm like, no. Christine. Christine, yep. So, yes, yes, yes. And her sister. Well, I mean, the photos her sister. Right, um, right. So, since we kind of went in the, the, okay, so let's, let, we're going to stay on this Datu thing, but let, let me, um, let me, let me just double. Okay. So, Leonard Trigg was pretty much the, the person that you would say is the most influential about getting Remy into the Pacific Northwest. Oh yeah, no doubt. No well, doubt. There you go. Yeah. There, yeah. there. And and Leonard Trigg is, and as we talked before, he's you, he's not a, a very public kind of guy. He likes being behind the scenes more than in front of the cameras, right? Sure, sure. And now, you know, uh, I mean, his his skill level is just off the chart. And to see a guy six foot four, six foot five, to move like he does is just. Uh, okay. Pretty, pretty amazing. Now, now, did you? Uh, and this is when I had to walk and take care of. I, I thought I heard from the other room. Did you say he was a uh, a law enforcement officer, LEOs? Yeah, yep. yep. So, and that's kind of the thing right there. A lot of LEOs are low key. They don't want to be out in the in the public eye. Sure. Uh, not covert because that's not what we're saying. It's just that they have a different role, and, and it's very common. I see a lot of. I, I see a lot of. Well, you know, it's also the same thing when you go to the trade show. There's the operators and then there's the operators and usually <laughs> yeah. the ones that talk less are the ones that you really need to worry about or they're, they're the ones that are less bullshit and you know the ones sure. that are oh i sure. did this i did that i'm like yeah, maybe maybe not doesn't sound right to me but i'm not in that field so i wouldn't know mm -hmm. um so okay um so obviously kelly had a kelly or i mean um Dieter had a tribe so it made sense for Dieter to be a datu um how I mean the one thing I didn't know is like how did uh how did Hoffman? Well, I think Hoffman was tied in with Randy Shea in a lot of ways, and Hoffman was also an acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so there was that aspect. Uh, David and I were never uh, personally introduced. He sent me all kinds of uh, written documentations. Uh, he was like served uh, vice president of uh, Modern Arnis when it was organized. And uh, so, yeah, there's some interesting documents that he sent me. It's probably better we don't talk about it. I, I think yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but a lot of wrist uh, lock. I never, yeah, I never see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never seen David uh, do do anything, do much, that type of stuff. But so I, I think possibly maybe it was administrative. I did uh, get some wind that his knife skills were pretty pretty dynamic, but never seen it. Or uh, I yeah, met, yeah. I, I've known Dave for years. Well, of course, I you know I don't want to speak ill of the dead because he had passed passed yeah. away. Um, so, um, but I met him at so the first camp I went to was the '86 Mississippi Summer Camp. That's where I first met him, um, and he he could move. There was no question that he could move. Um, I think he was in England when that all went down, and he may have had a following over there. Um, yeah, but I wasn't okay. sure, sure, if sure. There was something else going on there. Um, yeah. you know, if there was, you know, I mean, because you know, I, you know, it's always good to get other information, things from a different perspective. So, yeah, um, no, again, you know, pretty much our, all our community, well, uh, either phone calls or uh, yeah. internet stuff. And, uh, you know, especially after a uh, professor passed away, then yeah. I just got swarmed with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I so I just uh, put a lot of things in word files and oh. tucked it away. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you and me both, brother. <laughs> so we have a lot of the. A lot of the same, similar traits when it comes to stuff like that. Um, so, um, Ty, what do you got? Anything uh, jumps out at you here? Uh, well, actually, I'm just enjoying all the all the history because all this stuff. Remember, I came, I started the early '90s, so all this stuff I had heard about but never been a part of. So this is really, uh, really good for me to hear. And right now, we're, once again, um, we got 23 live viewers, uh, which. You know, usually with podcasts like this, you don't get a lot. I mean, Dean Franco was telling me, you know, I was doing our shows, and I said, yeah, we have like 15 on average. He goes, that's really good numbers to live, because he usually doesn't have that until after the show. Um, so, and actually, last week, we had a phenomenal show, a lot of really good interaction. So I was really excited about this show, too, because, you know, having you on and with the interaction we had last time, I, th I just I thought it was just going to be another win-win. Mm -hmm. So um, let me see from Danny Terrell, Trigg is quite a soft-spoken, unassuming. He moves um, with smoothness and power. Well, you know, about Trigg, uh, prior to, you know, Arnie's participation, he was in the military. He was part of the Kyoshin Kai. So he was one of those bare-knuckle guys in Europe fighting with some of the top fighters over there. Uh, prior to that, even, old-school boxing. His dad, father taught him old school boxing. So nice. he's one of the most classically trained boxers. As a matter of fact, he's Dan and Osanto's boxing coach. He's in really? charge of, yeah, he's wow. in charge of, he's in charge of uh, Master Chai's boxing, where Chai takes care of the Muay Thai, Triggs the uh, technical advisor for Western boxing integration there. He, uh, he was very close with uh, Lucky Luke I Luke, Ted's uh, father. Uh, so the Panatukan, the knife boxing, and the stick boxing was all part of that uh, formulation and integration. As a matter of fact, he took over Luke I Luke I uh, College AKD. Uh, that was where one of my more recent certifications came from four or five years ago. Uh, endorsed by Dan and Osanto, Master Chai, and Herman Sawanda, as well as Professor Trigg and the late Greg Allen, uh, Allen uh, out of Texas, uh, who was actually bodyguard for uh, Donald Trump when Trump was down in Texas. You know, hmm. but Greg Greg was a great technician, full full level under uh, in Osanto as well. Uh, Trigg really, uh, Bastilio really admired Trigg. Of course, Rich was a hell of a boxer, uh, great mover. As a matter of fact, Richard was uh, 
considered the enforcer for Bruce's group. You know, if you said you were about Bruce and, you know, Bastilio wanted to know. And, uh, you know, uh, he brought me in for, I had trained with Rich for years and years. Uh, I just was, I wasn't interested in getting in line. So I just wanted the JKD, the formulation. We did that year early on in the 1980s. Uh, I called it poor boy JKD because we didn't have silver spoons and we weren't going to buy into it, you know? So, Hey, what, what do you call that? Poor boy JKD later on, it became renegade JKD because yeah, I was accused of that more than one time, but, uh, you know, so, uh, when Edgar Salente passed away, Trigg was considered the heir to that oh. because it would have been Dan, but Paula and Dan decided that it was just too much responsibility. Same thing happened when Herman Sawanda passed away. Trigg brought, was the next technical mm -hmm. director. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from Lukey Lukey to Lameko to Herman Sawanda's uh, method at Mondamuda, you know, and plus he was certified under Paul de Troyes and the Patika Nagara and four families of Tai Chi. Wow. Trigg's combat Tai Chi is just brutally, you know, I mean, you take on Yoisa mm -hmm. and you perform that like Tai Chi, the, the rolling energy, mm -hmm. uh, spiraling, mm -hmm. you know, great story. Lukey Lukey got sick at the water and steel. He wasn't feeling well. So I said, Hey, it's, it's dead spot. Do you want to teach it professor? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you see professor Trigg, there's two, two methodologies when you're studying and I have a real hard time with, uh, intellectualizing. I could probably learn better from my, my wife after the seminar, when we get home and, you know, I don't feel like I'm being observed and critiqued or you drop that brow and you go into predator mode. Well, then you're really kind of stealing the show from whoever's presenting curriculum because, you know, you're fired up and you're throwing the game down. So I perform better in predator mode, very reactionary and intentful. Uh, so, you know, um, I filmed this footage at the camp and uh, Professor, Tr I said uh, to Dr. Brett. American Sambo, who was also one of Ramey's students. I said, hey, uh, you know, Dr. Brett, uh, uh, Professor Trigg did some stuff at the camp, and he's like, oh, the sloth? Mm. So visualize a sloth mm. just kind of moving along. Of course, mm. at the at an Anosano seminar, you know, Anosano comes up to his elbow maybe, right? And same with Lukey Lukey, same mm. with Edgar. I mean, Edgar was a thick guy, but he was still short in stature. So I said, well, no, it's a little bit more than that. And so I, he said, send me the video, uh, VHS at that time. So I yeah. sent him the video. And I kid you not, the stamp was barely dry. And that was the first video that, uh, you know, that, so that would have been 94 or something like that. And that was the first video that uh, Dr. Brett put in. And he just called me up and he goes, Mo better, Mo better, Mo better. He just couldn't believe how fast Trigg was. And he went from boxing, shutting this guy down. He smacked Rain Golf so hard upside the head that his hair went, to he had long hair. His hair was totally out to the side. And somebody got a still photo of that. <laughs> and uh, then he went, then he dropped down into a foot trap and, uh, and Caught, caught the guy uh, with a with a, a, a knee slap to the knee. Well, rain went down. This foot came over the top, and he wears a size 18, 19 shoe. And uh, one 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 of the camps, he forgot his shoes while he was loading the car. And so he said, "Hey, maybe your wife could help me find a pair of shoes." He had flip flops on, and I was like. Well, chances that aren't going that that's not going to happen and don't worry about your shoes, just go to your neighbor's house. They're probably turned into planters on their front porch, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, that guy could that guy could he can move, man. He can move. And there's that little clip. There's that little clip on my page where Paulo filmed him and uh, you know, he'll just kind of majestically follow through and next thing you know that sticks coming out 
and he's you know cutting through ripping through the air i mean yeah you're you're jumping back a foot when that guy comes at you cool. all right so from the philippines i think uh, uh, oh yeah uh, pugai pole and then uh danny terrell coach trey uh coaches the boxing with uh the yeah. Thai Boxing Association camps. And then Rocky's got a couple here. So he goes, uh, Greg Allen was the great guy. He and Al McClucky, Tom Bizio, Jim Burchfield. Man, those were the days. So many new guys haven't ever heard of those guys. Yeah. And then Kelly, have you ever heard of a James DeMille? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was actually Jesse's student. He wasn't. He wasn't Bruce's student. He, you know, Bruce hesitated uh, to, you know, really be close with DeMiles because DeMiles was a Navy boxer. You know, he was he was very skilled. Ed Hart, Bruce's second student, was also a boxer, but he was from uh, the back east type of thing. And he actually, you know, Ed's passed away, uh, but he beat somebody pretty bad he thought he killed him so he jumped in his car and he drove to the west coast couldn't get away with that shit today you know uh but i understand why he's running my brother did the same thing you know uh, he went awol because he beat the shit out of a commanding officer and uh and got here and then he beat the shit out of a couple guys and that turned into uh, some more problems so you know but uh that's that'll be all in my memoirs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Names have been changed to protect the guilty. You know? yeah, there you go. So, yeah. so uh, we're coming up on the hour, uh, hour marker. So first yeah, of all, yeah, you um, know, you can you can have fifteen more minutes. I already okay. talked to the well, guys. Well, the so. other thing too is, uh, you know, um, would you like to be back on the show again? Oh yeah, man. There's all you kinds know, of stuff not, to talk let's about. Worry about you know. jamming stuff in there. So Thanks. Ty, yeah. um, why don't we why don't we ask one more question? You got to yeah. have a good one there. Um, I do have one, yeah. Uh, Kelly, have you heard of Bruce C. Terrell of Wu Ying Tao? Sure, of course. Bruce was around for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, that. I, I mean, I knew a lot of guys from that system, you know, and uh, they, they were either a uh, variation of Kaji Kembo. And uh, Bruce has written several books, I believe, but I also believe that that was where uh, Dan Anderson studied when he was younger. Okay. So, but yeah, he was out of Portland area and, you know, I mean, okay. cool. I, cool. I, again, you know, there's cool. just so many people to kind of keep a, keep an eye on and yeah, that type uh, of stuff. Eric has studied with him as well. So that's cool. Bruce, yeah. So uh, Ty, why don't you, uh, why don't you ask the, why don't we do this? We'll ask the last question of the evening. So then we'll talk about if you got anything you want to promote, and then we'll uh, I'll give you a holler tomorrow, and then uh, maybe we'll figure out a, a good time for a part two conversation. Sure, sure, sure. This the time has uh, been blown by pretty fast, but I, it just occurred to me there was one that I wanted to ask earlier when we were talking about uh, starting with Remy and things like that. Um, I know at some point he didn't go that often out to the to the Pacific Northwest out there, and I'm wondering, you know. What was the time spread and how often? And then when when and why? Or do you know anything about, you know, how that petered out? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, gosh. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mean, uh -oh. I would say, you know, I would say I started with him in 1983. So he was coming in at least a couple years prior to that. Uh, of course, early early uh, or, or late seventies was when Ernesto rolled in. And, you know, I really intended uh, uh, to get with professor Trigg and get some closer things. And, and that's, that's something, I mean, uh, Trigg's been having some medical uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. And again, he doesn't make that public. Uh, that's why he missed camp last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. uh, when I talked to him uh, about three weeks ago, uh, prior to us, discussing uh, the show he'd he'd been to the er about four times and he's he's uh ex-military so having problems with the veterans administration and uh, as a lot of people have so 
uh, he's anticipating a couple different surgeries, and so that's mm-hmm. kind of a concern. What's, what's up, buddy? So the staff, he's jumping on me. He's like, hey, hey, it's time to get out in the gym. He's the gym dog. He's out there uh, getting his attention. Okay. But, uh, you know, I, I'd say Ramey probably 94 probably 94 or something like that. Uh, so, Hey, here's a, here's a good political shit in the pants type of story. Uh, he had a camp up in, uh, Canada. I was already the da too. I was going to California. Um, Jose Bueno was, uh, the guy out of California and, uh, Dan Verdugo and, uh, Oh, a few other guys down there. Uh, I'd have to go back into the notebook and find them all. Uh, but uh, so I was going to California. I was going to Oregon and I was going up to Canada. And so I, I roll up with my daughter who was probably two or three. And uh, Laura at that time, she was a pretty great, talented practitioner as well. So who's there? But Dan and, uh, Jose and uh, Shashir. And next thing you know, we're filming. It's raining like hell. It's Mm -hmm. muddy, everything else. But it was time to kick the shit out of Datu Kelly. (laughs) So uh, I get out there and I'm doing some stuff. And he's like, Datu, do this, do this, do this, do this to Freddie, do this to you know, David. You know, next thing you know, now now you guys do it to Datu. Oh, okay. Well, how's this working? You know, these guys are my students too. And now there's, now they're grinding me into the dirt and then Ramey does the same thing. It's all being filmed. And I like, Hey, you know, then there was a meeting and, uh, I'm the one that's getting through. I'm stealing people's students. Well, hold it. You promoted me to die too. Right. And uh, so if they're not respecting it, why ain't they supporting it? If I'm kind of the senior guy, maybe they should be coming in and supporting it. Instead, they're trashing me every which way they can. And so him and I had a conversation. And I just said, hey, you know what? I'm fucking done with this. You know, so I'm walking out. When I see these fucking people, I'll kick their asses. Maybe you should kick my ass, too. And, uh, so it got pretty heated, you know? And, uh, so this would have been, yeah, 92 or 93, right about then. Uh, well, I was teaching military off and on anyway, but that's when full contact came out. Okay. And, uh, so now I'm right, you know, time is a little bit of time has passed. We haven't been talking and, uh, and I haven't been promoting modern our knees. I just been doing my own thing. Um, Started. I did my first eight tape uh, video series, Slam and Jam. Uh, some people had something to say about that. Well, that's Ramy stuff. I goes, well, yeah, of course it is. Also, Cooey stuff, and then it's probably enhanced with the Mad Hatters stuff. I mean, I was definitely kind of considered, you know, off the chart and uh, kind of a loose cannon. I, I can admit that. No, Jeez, you know, that's, that's that's how that's how you grow up in Tacoma. Roll on in, boys. I'll still take you for a roll around the block, you know. But uh, you know, so right, I was doing some advertising and inside kung fu for the Silent Fighter for my videos, things like that. And uh, you know, Ramy never threw me under the bus. As a matter of fact, he sent guys like Dan McConnell to me. You know, Dan was a rescue worker, uh, fire department lieutenant. Uh, he need he knew that he needed knife skills, so he was still pushing me and promoting me. Then out of the blue, I called him up one night, found out where he was, and. He says, oh, my God, uh, I'm alone in my hotel, and, uh, you know, I'm lonely, but you call me. I've been thinking of you, and, you know, then I went to the next seminar, and I walked in, kneeled down on the ground like I was going to get, uh, you know, decapitated, and he's like, no, 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 get up, get up, not here, not here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was pissed at you. I was really pissed at you, but not now. Uh, you you did this all on your own. You didn't ride my coattail. You know, you you are the da too. And, you know, it was one of those things. So, you know, and then, 
you know, so the best thing I ever did, you know, like a fight with your parents or something like that. And, uh, uh, the best thing I did was resolve that relationship long before he passed away. And then, uh, Roland Dantes and I were probably the two people that were really there all the time for Ramy when he was up in the care facility. And, uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I was with the first special forces at that time and I was taking as many weekends as I could, uh, to make that trek up there and, and spend that time with them. And, you know, so yeah, we had our disagreement and, uh, but, you know, and there, he all said that too. It wasn't about us. Mm -hmm. It was about others, but, you know. And so that was why you're shaking your finger, Tim. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I, I, well, I, well. First of all, I'm, <laughs> I didn't want to make this a political thing, but I'm going to throw some since the fire's already started. Sure, yeah. I'm going mean, to throw some, some gasoline on well, it. Well, the the, the, the issue with politics is, you know, of course, there's two sides to the story, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's a clarity on well. what truly. What truly is going on? I, I think there's the third side, because yeah. I think you found out when you talked to Chad about you, me, and somebody else. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the ass clown side from the outside, who's the agitator, taking things out of context, trying to spin people up. Because I think well, we know we know people who have, who, you know, here's the thing, and 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 for everyone's listening, Kelly's the kind of guy I like to work with, not because he's Kelly Warden because of the magazines and all this other shit, because what he just said, he's made his own shit. Everything he's done, he's done on his own. He didn't ride the coattails. When, when I had a problem, when Remy resigned because of his medical condition, I quit the organization because I was a student of Remy's, not a member of the IMAF per se. We were about Remy Praces. And I think most of the people had that direct relationship. I'm not going to get into what happened there, but I, what I'm doing today I built my my school, I built my organization, and I didn't do it with someone helping me in that kind of manner. I made my own thing, and that's the kind of people I like to work with. Kelly has always been his own man. He's always done this stuff. I don't need people from the side, you know, people that are crying, complaining, and saying, oh, this, that, and the other thing, that are doing nothing. Okay, well, I do social media stuff. Okay, well, what's that turning into? I write books, I do videos, I do this. What's that turning into? Kelly's got a, 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 a solid organization with numbers that, that is international. And it's because of the work he's put in where a lot of other people just, you know, it's like crabs. When you go to Chinatown, why is the top of the container always open? Because the crabs in the bottom, while one's trying to get up and out, the other one pulls them down. And that's not, that's not what Kelly's done. Kelly's said, screw you, I'm going to do my own thing. And I like that. And these are the kind of people that I like surrounding myself with as a whole. And I, and if more people took this work ethic, we would be in so much better place. So that's my little rant. Um, so we've got a guy fart like the wind who is a, he's oh, like yeah. a mass comedian. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey guts. It must be guys. guys yeah. Hope you all well. Uh, me pissed, lost my good kid to travel hockey four days a week. Boo. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, Grandmaster Uno from the Philippines says hello. Good Greetings, bell. sir. Yep. Maganda Umaga. And then here we go, Rocky. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Wow. Uh, Kelly sounds like you and I have very similar relationships with the old man. <laughs> Fortunately, you made up with him. Uh, I envy you for that. Okay. And then last few times uh, we spoke, uh, it was more cussing and screaming. Really sucks because he was uh, close to my, he was, he was so close to my dad. And then, Mr. Benko, uh, what a great show. I learned so much tonight. Thank you. And on that note, and then, uh, of course, one of our guys says, hello, guys. Okay. Hello, Datus and PG Ty. We'd love – well, I want well, – You know, I, there, there, there are two DVDs uh, I did with Roland Dantes. Now, he was with me out at Fort Lewis. I'd take him to the Special Forces training, and he would literally talk – because his dad was a four-star general – in the Cebu region, 
And uh, so he would talk to the troops and tell them stories about General MacArthur and, uh, you know, all Filipino history from the Philippines and the tribal aspect. Mm. But we did a show right after uh, Ramey died at Bullseye Shooter Supply. I was teaching there. That's where Mohammed and Melvo stole the Beltway sniper rifle. Mm. So that was uh, Brian Borgelt, my student, owned that store. It wasn't his fault that uh, two guys came in and stole the rifle. Uh, can't even go into all the, the details with that. But uh, we did a show right after uh, Ramey had passed talking about Auntie Nanty. Rosemary called prior to that and told Roland, you need to take, you need to take it, you need to take it. Of course, all this was going on in Tagalog. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Roland did this show. We did the whole interview thing, and Roland was crying, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, Ramey was like, you take this, you take this. And then later, Rosemary, Rosemary told me in San Francisco that it was a friend uh, of her cousin's, the holy man, and he was still alive at that time. I could get you Auntie Nanting too. And, but Roland, I remember, uh, he, he, he didn't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Boy, I mean, very guttural yelling uh, between both of them. Mm. But that's an interesting DVD. Uh, okay. uh, I, I never released it publicly or anything, but, uh, you know, some people have access to it. Okay. And, you know, I make it available to some people. So that's okay. an interesting, uh, yeah. interesting story about the anti anti. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. a lot of people say that that, that Ramey didn't have that, but he did. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, so um, and for those who want more information on Mr. Warden here, by all means, here, I just put on your tag here below, and I sent a link out on us, um, www.wardendefense.com. All right. Yeah. Make sure yeah. and check out stuff. He's got a huge library of videos. Uh, the Water and Steel Camp is Labor Day weekend. Um, there is a... Uh, Right now, this pre-registration is open today. It's four ninety nine. I'm looking at the website as we speak. Sure. Uh, it's four ninety nine if you want it, and nine ninety nine if you don't. So if you don't want to go to camp, send them nine ninety nine. <laughs> and Kelly, I got a hundred bucks of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so um, let me see. And there, here I'm gonna just pop that up right there. There you, there go. you go. There you go. So. Nice. Um, Man, I had a good time. I uh, can't wait to get you back on the show. What do you think there, Dr. No, that'd be great. The time, it, it blew by. So that thanks for so sharing. Yep. And, 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 and here's the thing. We didn't stay much time on the how it got up there because he nailed it right off the bat. There really wasn't much. I mean, I don't want to say there's not much to it. Kelly was direct, precise, got the message out, boom, done. And it gave us time to talk about other things. And we can do that with so many other things as well. Um, you know, here's the thing. There, there are We have to re respect... I, I look at everybody out there as a source of information. I know that every time I saw a professor, I learned something new, which makes me wonder, how much did I miss? What, what are the stories? And, um, you know, we have to listen to, the, to all the manungs, the seniors out there. And, and some are seniors in the way of they, they are senior technical position and others are the elders that have been around that may not have taken much of the martial art as a, a profession, like some of my guys have seen modern East and Buffalo and that's not their profession. But the thing here is they were there with professor being around mm -hmm. having all personal stories and anyone who's got any contact with professor, I want to hear about it. And look at this mm -hmm. 28 people on the show. Nice watching live, which you normally, we don't get that much. Uh, Maria Aquino says hello from Canada, by the way. I know she's been trying to say, Hey, let's, uh, how do we get the, the two, the three doctors <sighs> to Canada? She's she's very tenacious. Um, she doesn't take no for an answer, um, so that's why we don't talk to her. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, there's a lot of great uh, modern Arnese guys out there. The, the original guys off the East Coast, where Ramey kind of rolled into, you know, uh, great stories just from those people. Uh, Tom Bolden was a great practitioner. Billy Bryant. Long, long ago too. Don't know what happened to him, but hey, you know he's he was out there in the beginning. You know, two guys I really admire is uh, Chuck Goss and Kenny Smith. I had a great seminar with them, and you know uh, they 
really, they really like my integration. You know, I'm not a tappy tappy guy. I just engage quickly in close quarter is one of the things I do. So uh, I'm not tied into that. Uh, influences from Bastilio, from Lukey Lukey, Sonny Umpa, Jesse Glover. Uh, you know, it's pretty amazing. Jesse would say that uh, Sonny Umpod was Bruce Lee with sticks in his hand. So, uh, and Sonny also came from Ansiyan Bacan. And, uh, you know, so uh, it's just an interesting blend. Um, Wally J said when we were down with the family with Ramey Jr. and uh, Demetrio, Mary Jane, uh, Maria was the only one that didn't show up. Uh, so it was, uh, Marianne too. So Wally J and Beatrice came in and, uh, you know, and Riddell was there as well. And, uh, Wally was like, Hey man, you're one of the only guys I see that really move like Ramey. I said, yeah, I, you know, uh, in that regard, Imperato had me do a, a workshop, uh, demonstration for him. And he's like, Oh man, you got Kaji Kimball written all over you. And I spun around kind of in a pirouette and I says, really, what's it say over here? How about <laughs> this side? What's it say over there? You know, so, I mean, modern Arnis is the art that's in your art. So uh, with as uh, many different groups that I've taught, uh, their skill, uh, their skill, their art, their expression it's all within modern Arnis, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I did tell Ramey when we were up at the uh, care facility when I expressed my Anyos, we did a big demonstration there mm -hmm. with uh, Roland Dante's. Ramey was there in the lunchroom with about 100 uh, senior citizens uh, all watching. I said, that guy right there is world famous. That guy is a movie star. You know, and uh, then I did the demo, and uh, Ramey's like, oh, my God, you know, I, I said, you're, you're like a bird. I said, yeah, I get it. I says, we used to need karate. Mm -hmm. My Filipino martial arts doesn't need karate now. It can be expressed. I, my belief is the años should be expressed no different than C-Lot. But there are structured hard style C lot systems as well. But if you see Chamande or something of that regard, or Mandamuda even, it is very soft, it's very fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, whereas some Kuntao uh, expressions like Lanata's is very Shotokan and Shorinru. Uh, uh, it was Herman Suwanda that was like, oh, Sea lot is in everything, mm -hmm. so you know you're you're again with that. You know that uh, modern Arnis is like that. It integrates almost every art out there, and so that's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. All right, uh, Mamadoulai says, uh, "Good to see you from the Philippines." Oh yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, we've got uh, two weeks Master Parsons uh, Cyber Class. Okay, that's good. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Chris Nally says hello from. Uh, North Carolina, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's everywhere. And he's all the Datu, all the Datu, all the Datu. Dexter James, man, I'm sorry I missed Datu Kelly talking about adding the adrenaline dump to modern Arnie's. Yeah. And then good stuff from Kara. Uh, wonderful show. Brian Kanata. Uh, hello, gentlemen. How you doing, sir? Um, you know, yeah, I think uh, we'll have to make sure. Well, I will uh, call you later in the week and we'll. Uh, See, make sure that everything's good, and we'll. Uh, well, maybe we'll put put Dean in between you and me the next time, and see yeah. if uh, you know Dean wants to rock and roll on his side of the radio, and uh, then we'll make it happen. There's there's plenty of me to go around. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 if I actually took some notes, uh, you know, we could, you know, really cover some serious history. Oh, you know? here we go. Oh, um, yeah. Why? Why and how it how it came about you know uh again the addition of jesse glover and richard bastilio i mean when i went to bastilio's i said to him i goes uh why are you bringing me in you know you got guru dan teaching and, and i said what's guru dan teaching he's teaching knife i like well why do you want me to teach that was a thanks you know i mean <laughs> i said why do you want me to teach he goes because your knife is real he says, it's one thing to have the classical approach, but 
you'll scare the shit out of these guys and maybe they'll stop playing knife games. I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't make any friends that day, maybe a few. But to say the least, I was pretty much off the hook. And, uh, you know, you, you know, you don't get seminars where you go, fuck this guy and throw him into the wall or pick up a chair and, you know, simulate crushing somebody i mean if somebody's pulling a blade on you i mean where are we at in a nice padded training facility no or in a bar or something so uh spitting tequila in the motherfucker's face and hitting him with his bar stool i mean just trying to be honest mm -hmm. but uh, you know and cussing isn't necessarily everything but what how do you get your adrenaline up you literally have to become that person mm -hmm. and uh, hey, or way, you become the devil? You become passive, you know. Yeah. Look who popped who on. It? Oh, it's <laughs> he hacked. Hey. He's 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 a master hacker. Uh, okay, okay. What's going on, Dave? How are you, Don? And yes, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. love to uh, you know, just me and you, me, you and uh, Datu, me, you, Datu, and PG Ty, whatever is convenient for everybody. Yeah. I would be humbled and honored. You want all three of us? Are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, well, I don't want to leave anybody out. So I'm just, uh, you know, so, uh, but yes, I would be humbled and honored to uh, uh, do it. Absolutely. So you'd have Datu, Datu, Doctor, and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should Dr. do a Bobby. double Datu show. Yeah. Uh, you, Dr. Kelly, we're going to have to talk some 60s muscle cars. Just oh, saying, yeah. Well, dang. Dang. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have to do it. Just I, sold, I just sold my 51 Chevy Coupe. So uh -oh. that was pretty old school, you know, built uh, 292 uh, Muncie four speed. Oh, I mean, yeah. Baby, baby blue. It was a bitch and ride. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Before I got back onto so, Facebook, I was a uh, big in the Oldsmobile War, 442s and W30, W31. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I was collecting them, parting them out, and then finally my wife one day said, like, um, you know, this guy Enough. and junk, junk cars were coming in the driveway. I was parting them out, and it just, um, yeah, she put the kibosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, unfortunately, uh, my brother, older brother, just passed away up in Alaska. Oh, and, I'm sorry. Uh, he had, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, he has over 30 cars on his property, 34 Ford, 36 Ford, 44 uh, Delivery, a couple Woodies. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, you know, he just believed that he wasn't going to pass away, and he was building it up till the day they pulled him out of the shop and, you know, took him to the hospital. A couple of days later, he passed away, and, uh, oh, man, you know, so families got to figure out a way to get all that all that material all those cars yeah, all that, and there's five feet of snow iron, uh, yeah and there's five feet of snow so yeah he had uh on the property he had his body shop paint and body then he has upholstery shop and his engine and frame and you tell him what you want he did a lot of 50 uh 54 55 uh glass top victorias wow. uh yeah, just the guy was just a, a an animal, and his airbrush skills. Well, I did airbrush flames, murals, and stuff. But his airbrush skill, you know, he could redo, uh, you know, a Firebird, uh, the Firebird hood thing, but just oh, wow. add complete different games to it. He was really amazing with the old uh, rat fink and the gear shift coming out the windshield and. He, he just did all that kind of stuff early on. And, yeah, uh, yeah just a great technician. So true, truly a loss for the custom car world. Oh, you know? no, that's too bad. My, my father, like you, was into the 50s and 30s. Like he had a 51 Mercury uh, French cut, you know. Um, yeah. Oh, skirt. yeah. Those are, those are bitch. And I just got, you know, it wasn't that long ago. I, we built uh, my daughter's 51 Ford. It was a four door. So took it into the shop and made the rear door suicide. So they were like the Mercury and oh, nice. uh, dropped it on the ground. It stayed flathead automatic, you know, uh, same time I had a two door 51 that was just stock cherry fat white wall skirts, everything, oh, a little three speed flathead. And she's like, oh, we need to do this. We need to do that. 
that's when we went and found her a 51 so she could, you know, we did the flame job and painted it flat black. And then we did it baby blue after that, uh, or Robin a blue basically. And yeah, so she, she did the body work with me and, uh, and I let her do the paint job on the flames after we laid them out. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm into the knife making now. See, this one just got done. Jeez. Here's another one, right? Uh, how many bowies does it take to <laughs> walk down the streets of Tacoma? <laughs> well, at least two, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then this is uh, this is a Prasis Damascus. Uh, oh, nice. Well, it's actually mosaic. I didn't I didn't do the mosaic. There it is. But beautiful stuff with a maple handle. Yeah. So this is, you know, this is a great story. I'll, I'll do this one and I'll close up for you. But, okay. you know, I, I originally done this and you can see the, the dip here. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, it's just perfect for the Filipino grip. Right. Mm -hmm. And but I did it going, ah, you know, not that I was making it for Ramey. I did the knife and I was like, oh God, that just looks stupid. And I threw it off onto the side and I did it with a piece of Devin Thomas Damascus. So I think I paid 200 bucks for that piece of Damascus and I'm going, oh yeah, I mean, I really screwed that up. And then somewhere along the line, uh, you know, I'd been up and seen Ramey for a while and I was just like, you know, the fucking Filipino grip. And I went back and picked that knife up. And I finished it. Next one we do, I'll, I'll pull it out or I'll send you a picture so you can flash it out. But if you see this profile here, it's kind of like there's a forehead and a chin or a nose and then down here into the mouth. And when I filed it, I notched it here and I notched it there. I did some filing. And literally, it's got the silhouette of a woman on it, right? Kind of a, a soft feature of a female. Mm. And uh, so anyway, I took it up to professor and, uh, you know, nobody had told him he was going to die. He really felt that he was going to recover. And, uh, you know, so I, I just said, you know, well, he started, I said, hey, professor, I want to present this knife to you for you. And uh, he goes, oh, well, we call it Barikdaran. And I thought that was kind of a cool name. And Roland Dante says, well, he started snicker. And he goes, well, no, in the, in the Philippines, those are lesbian movies. And I was like, what? Okay, well, we're not going to do that. And then he says, uh, de blada. And I like that, too, you know, double, double. And uh, so I thought, de blada, that's a cool name. And I said, well, how about if we call it the Praces Legacy? I said, uh, you know, steel will outlive us all and i was kind of hinting to him i goes i pulled my knife out i said you know this is the warden vortac and you know steel outlives us all in a hundred mm -hmm. years they'll see this knife and it's the precious legacy mm -hmm. and he says and i said a hundred years they'll just know that knife man that was a badass dude you know the professor you know and he goes, you do that for me? I goes, yeah, of course. How, how does that sound? The Praceless Legacy. Oh, my God. You know, and he wouldn't let go of it. But there was only one. I had to take it back home with me, you know. Uh, oh, on that note, you know, uh, I did take a sword up into uh, Victoria um, and present it to him, put it in his casket. Mm. And that was uh, at the funeral and, uh, you know, we carried it on the Victoria Clipper. Had two of the SF guys with me. Big old, I look small compared to them. <laughs> and uh, they didn't say anything. I had a pheasant plume on it and uh, carried it right through. I told them it was a ceremonial blade for, it was razor ass sharp. Mm -hmm. And uh, so right after that, 9-11 hit. And they mm -hmm. wouldn't let the casket go to the Philippines with the sword in it. So I had to go back to Canada and get the sword. Mm -hmm. And then that following uh, month, month and a half, a couple months later, I did the seminar down in uh, uh, San Pablo with uh, the Praces family, the kids, and Wally J and Riddell. And uh, so I presented it 
to them. I said, uh, last person to touch this was your dad. Mm. He had passed away, but it was in the casket. So here's a family heirloom. So, yeah, we wow. can, we can, there's a picture of that uh, with me and uh, Doug Pierre, because Doug mm. was at the funeral too. Mm. So I'll, I'll try to, maybe when we do the next um, interviews, I'll send you some of these pictures and you can splash them up on the screen cool, or something cool. like close up of the Prasis knife. And uh, it was actually, the sword was made by Jerry Hosm. I don't know if you guys know who Jerry is, but it's called the Espada. And uh, Jerry had sent it to me after uh, blade testing it, cut through a whole side of beef, mm -hmm. bone and all. And uh, he said the, the, the blade was stained. Would I like it? You know, it's about a fifteen hundred or two thousand dollar blade. I said, "Sure, Jerry, blood stains don't bother me." If you, you insist. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So right, that was that was pretty cool. Cool. So Rocky uh, signs off saying, "Great listening to you guys tonight. You're one of a kind, Kelly." So uh, well, it's been said before in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and on that note, hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming on the show. No, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank your students for letting us uh, take their time. Yeah. By the yeah. way, uh, I'm gonna go right out now, there and kick some ass now. Kelly's yeah. supposed to be teaching right now, and um, you know, made sure that he was had time to share with us. So, yeah, thank you, um, thank, thank you, thank you so yeah. much, Kelly. No sweat, guys. Sounds good. All, All right, right, Dean. We'll talk soon. No, absolutely. I'm going to send you a message and whatever works for you guys. If you guys want to do it on a Monday night, that's fine. A Thursday, whatever you guys want to do, I'll make it happen. You guys, yeah, you, you, we'll work it out. Yeah, sure, man. Okay, cool. All right. All now, right. how do you shut this off? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of it. There you go. Uh, I'll kick him from the stew. There you go. And Kelly's out. <laughs> that was cool. Uh, that was cool. Thank you hey, for Dean, how you doing? Good. Thank you for bringing me on. Thank you. So just want to see really. Okay, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to give everyone, here's the, the skinny, by the way. And we had 31 people on that last portion live. That's, that's good. So really what happened is this was a free agency year and I picked up Dean's contract and FMA <laughs> discussion has lost Dean in the draft. <laughs> in the draft. <laughs> He's a free agent. He's a free agent. Free agent. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I am. I'm a free agent. And, uh, you know, retirement is just your next job. That's yeah. just it. And so what I'm doing is, well, we might as well just let the cat out of the bag since uh, Dr. Tim brought it up. But why I am going to be doing it, just a couple of shows and every discussion a month, I am going to be being on FMA Talk a lot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That has nothing to do with his backing away. You know, listen, uh, you know, uh, we just do this show once a week mm -hmm. and we take weeks off. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I love doing, I mean, these last two weeks were amazing. I mean, we yeah, really, we, we, get a, we get a couple good ones and you get that oh, momentum yeah. going, man. Last week, feeling. when we Here did the, uh, D Dean is now traveling. Exactly. That's <laughs> another thing. So nice. Yeah. Like, you know, true. it was that rough because true, uh, like, when we did the last dope. show of yours. It was rough because we had the time zone problem, debacle, and all this other stuff. You know, when you're on the road, you shouldn't have to be thinking. You shouldn't even think about it. You should have just sat there and said, can't do it until you got back. You no, know, but you know what it was? No, I was totally fine with it. I, I wanted to make that happen with you guys. I would have felt bad if we could have done do it another it time. Anything. But see, you know, this is it now. I mean, I I do this once a week. And we're going to take a couple. We're going to be taking at least one week off, um, and and I feel that it is a. I don't want to say it's a chore, but it is part of my job because I don't want to just phone it in. I mean, listen, this what we're doing tonight. That's the easy part. Mm -hmm. But what I got to do is I got to draw up a flyer. Uh, I I got to run run people through a, a a thing. So right now today I had um, Grandmaster. I want to see if I can pronounce his name right. Carlos, that was the, that was the easy part. Um, uh, Patalinghug. So he is a student of. Oh, did you get a hold of Don Cuesta? No, my God. And that's so he's a student mean. of Don Cuesta, and that's why we're. So I. This is the guy I sat on the testing board. He's going to be on our show on the twenty seventh. 
So today um, we did a test run. So for those who are going to be on the show, what I do is I have a, a test run that I it doesn't go public mm-hmm. because it's just to make sure you know the software. And to be honest with you, I mean, I'd rather just make a thing in the morning. Like today, um, what I did is I went online and go, hey, by the way, just as a quick reminder, I've got Dr. Kelly Warden coming on the show tonight, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, last week I, I, I try to do that. I, I, either I'll make a post or I'll yeah. go live. And but I mean, really, and just doing it one day a week is a lot of effort. And Dean <laughs> was doing show. I mean, you sometimes you were doing two shows in a day. Well, so, yeah. So sometimes what would happen, not with intention, um, you know, we would have, as everybody knows, we have a few moderators and other discussions. So Tom and Brian sometimes would coordinate interviews and you know nobody's fault it happens there'd be miscommunication and before you know it we got a double header um mm-hmm. yeah. and so instead of canceling a disappointing guest we just we would just well, run now that hasn't happened a lot yeah and we would just well, and, and you know with your show it, a lot of your the major like we talked about this we have more viewership on the front end and fma discussion has a lot more viewership on the back end so what that means is we'll have more live interaction on average, mm-hmm. um, but we have nowhere near the views afterwards on YouTube. Well, yeah, sorry, I mean, like, sometimes sorry, on Facebook too. In the team, like the other night, who, who did I? What was my last interview I did? Uh, was you? Was it you guys? Or I'm trying it to think. Yeah, but we were when you were in uh, in uh, Arizona or New Mexico. But we were, you know, I was in. If you get in the teens, we, I was in the teen. If you get in the teens, as far as live audience, I mean, that's good. It it, it really is. If you well, we, we, teens, we did high twenties last week. We got in the thirties this yeah, week. Yeah, like um, I'm I'm excited, yeah. you know. Yeah, and you know, like last guests, week, like when I had um, Ray Dianato, I think we were in the forties and fifties. Okay. I mean, so you know, depending on you know, we know it. It's name based, you know, depending mm-hmm. on you, you're getting on there. It's just the way it is. Like when I had Brian Kanata on, we were in the teens because he was talking about Bowie Knife. It, that just happened to nice. resonate with people. Uh, you know what I mean? Well, I tell you, last yeah. week's show was amazing. And that, you know, so, so interviews versus shows, you know, it's a little different. We mm-hmm. had a show, we didn't do an interview. And yeah. my goodness, it was amazing i mean it's just the 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 viewer interaction was but we went what we what we talk about is stick fighting for self-defense stupid yeah 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 and man that was there and you know and here's the thing you know um and um i gotta t- well okay um all right a, a message came in <laughs> Roberto Torres is in the hospital. Was in the hospital. I mean, Roberto Preces was in the hospital. He's out of the hospital right now. Uh, I am working on, and and uh, um, his uh, nephew and I have been chatting. Tomorrow, I'm going to be Western Union money over there. I will have information for people that can make donations directly. I do not want to. take money from anyone i uh i've seen in the past where people have taken money sent it on to plead people uh or take the money and then change the donation where it was going without confirming and and people not getting credit for stuff so what i'm in the process of doing is make sure this is all good send the money do the test run and then uh from there i will share that information with people who want to make a donation obviously people will know that i'm helping facilitate but Helping facilitate is different than sending the money, yeah. and and there and I just don't trust people. I, I like to know. My thing is that I don't. I'll tell you who to give it to, and that's between you and that person. So if it goes sideways, it's not me. Mm-hmm. But once again, we're trying to help out the family member. Uh, here we go. And uh, Brian says I'm still getting questions <laughs> from that show, Dean. Yeah. So again, to mention again, like. That show, it was, you know, obviously Brian is well liked, and uh, I can't wait to meet him one day. Um, but just the fact that we had somebody that was thorough, not just in the, the actual blade, but Brian brought a lot of historic historical content to that show. It just people wanted to hear about Bowie Knife. Uh, oh. We were, yeah, we were one time it was in the 20 viewers or team, whatever, but. Some subject matters, it's just going to really resonate with people. Yep. Obviously, it speaks for itself. 
big name guest. You know what I mean? Well, uh, there's some people that I'd love to. Have. There's two names I would love for you to get, and you probably won't know the names, but uh, I think they would be great. They have a lot of good information like that in history, like you said. One of them goes to well, both of them have been to my events, uh, which you got an invite now too. You saw that, right? Oh, I know. I, did, thank I you. know what you're gonna say. I know the one person you're gonna say, but he's a little anti-social at the moment. That's right, so. right. I won't say it, but I mean, you know, there are people out there like that, and and, and you know, everybody probably, you know, you've been around for a while. You probably know everybody probably knows at least one of those. Uh, how do you get those? How do you get that information out there? That's tough. No, I know. I mean, like you know, I've said this before, and I'm not afraid to say it again. Uh, regards of it, what people think, I've had really big name folks on, and they were okay shows. To be quite honest, I found some some of them to be kind of boring. I'm going to be honest. I've had like no name guy. Or I hate to say no name, but quote unquote not as popular. Or not well known. Name. Yeah. Well, and to me, yeah. they, they rocked it. Like yeah. their information, the way they came across, just the purity of themselves, the way they express themselves, their candor, um, their yeah. humility, just killed it. I mean, well, and, and that's it. I mean, we talk about stuff all the time about martial arts and we talk about what arts are have influence and all this other stuff. And unfortunately, like some arts, like what um, they think they've got more impact, but actually sometimes the smaller arts have more or, they look over. They overlook the big. The big arts look over them. Oh, how how can you just because you know Dulce Powers is big, Modern East is big, and all this other mm. stuff. But then you look at something like Serato, which is not a big art by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's regional, but man, the community talks about them a lot. Yeah, no, and I'm no, not no. talking about the political stuff. I mean, Angel Cabalas, Angel Cabalas didn't spread the art. It's his students that did the work, but. He was a name that that's people still talk about today. Oh, and like Bruce continue, Lee with Jeet yeah. Do. Bruce Lee died long before he got good. He was ahead of his time, but I mean, he died in his thirties. How good would he have been in the forties and the fifties? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, when especially when he, he refined and all the other information oh, yeah. in the pipeline, right? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. It's 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 a strange thing. I mean, it's um, sometimes you know. And there's certain days you're going to get more on the weekend, Sunday, you know, nothing too. If it's during football season, you run a show on a Sunday, oh, you're, yeah. you know, there's certain things if you, you if you compete with, then your show is going to probably yeah. not get as many viewers. So it's, so there's a, that, there's a scheduling dynamic. Oh, definitely. You know I mean? definitely. Um, so well, there's the other piece too, is, you know, not everyone is going to resonate with different people the same way. So some, you know, yeah. maybe, like maybe, for instance, we had named, you know, we had um, GM Nene Tortel, Tom did it. And I'm glad he did um, because, you know, he had, and I'm thinking like, man, this is going to smash. Like, this is going to be like the test run was a home run and it was good. Don't get me wrong. It was really good. Um, but um, it, I tell you, uh, it, I thought it was going to get a lot more hits, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, I mean, GM and Nate Tortel, I thought he was. Well, um, here's the problem. You, know, you are. Uh, and listen, the three of us are connoisseurs. We we do our homework. Yeah, I've I've had Nene at my school. I I've, I've 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 taught with him on the floor in Vegas. I've I, you know I get out there. So I mean, if you think about this, if you go to a Taekwondo school, most Taekwondo people don't know much more about what happens outside their school. They know what's in the school. Correct. Filipino martial art groups are no different than that. No, uh, no. I mean, like you. Only a couple people actually, if the instructor him him or herself does not venture outside their training area, what do they know? I mean, I travel all over the place and I would take my people with me. Not everyone's like that. No, or didn't expose their students, correct. Right, or didn't have the interest. They'll know everything about that particular art, but they won't know squat about anything else. No, that's that's a good... What's Rocky got here? Jim Tacosa was uh, one of the fastest guys I ever dealt with with a stick. His Surat is amazing. He's a tall guy too. Uh, if he's still around, you should put him on. Um, we, we, I, we've tried to get. Yeah, that name has definitely come up. We've tried, and I'm trying to recall what happened with that. But it's certainly worth trying again. I mean, you know, yeah. I think when it comes to the smaller people, or no, no, the less known people, they're more personal. And here's the reason why I think: because, like, when you're a bigger name. Mm-hmm. Sometimes an entourage falls, forms around them and protects you. The other thing, okay, so listen, we, we've got all these stories about Remy, and they're true, yeah. mm-hmm. okay? Remy would 
make sure to work the room to say hello to everybody one way or another. Mm-hmm. And it may have been, oh, you're doing good, and walk on. He still tried to make that interaction. Yeah, that, that connection, room. right. No. How many people don't go past the first 10 feet of where they're, where they're teaching? Or how don't many, even go in the middle of the floor. <laughs> how many people will walk around and work the room and, and, and do all that stuff? Mm-hmm. And true. the thing here is because they're not doing that, there might be this perceived barrier, or maybe people are putting a barrier in between the person. So, um, you know, I've met Inasano multiple times. I had a very good conversation with him one time, but mm-hmm. I don't find him to be as personal as Remy was. And it's not that he's not a nice guy. Right. But I also think, like, one of the guys that we used to always hang out with at one of these events was uh, Michael Jai White. And some people say, oh, he's the guy who played Spawn and, and Brass yeah. Tiger. And that. he goes, you know, I know my friend, uh, my, my brother from another mother, Carl, who's Bayesian, like, mm. he's a stuck-up guy of color. I'm like, dude, you're a guy of color. I know better. I'm like, I, that's why I know. And I'm like, and then I talk to people who are around. I'm like, no, he is shy mm. and makes him socially awkward and a lot of times mm. perceived as arrogance or whatever. It's like he, he just he just doesn't he, – he's good at what he does and working in the room isn't that thing. Mm. You yeah. Know? Uh, we're, oh, we're, here we go. Guru Dan is very shy. Mm-hmm. All right, I haven't said much. Okay, so listen, um, hey, uh, Mr. Wind, we didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't bring a lot of your comments in play because I don't know if Kelly hey, would have gotten that. At the buffet, I try to say hi to everyone. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I, I uh, uh, you know, then he, uh, here is I do not uh, have the test it's just right. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh no, he had, he had a good one. So then uh, here's the one I'm going to share because we were talking about old cars and all this other so yeah, he put, i i drove my car, chevy to the levee heavy, but <laughs> soon i'm going to be a jedi jetty so i i normally would have shared those but i don't know if kelly i don't know how kelly would have taken all that and yeah. it's our first interaction no i know and you start yeah and you want to like yeah where somebody else who's oh, no, well, there was definitely and... people that that would what that caused yeah. trouble between kelly and kelly yeah. and i haven't always gotten along and it, I think it's great that you had him on and you two have put that behind you. Well, we have talked since but, and other yeah. people have talked to him. And the, the, you know, here's the thing. I have people, we have people, we have friends in common mm-hmm. and somebody went and talked to him for me. Not, not, I didn't send him, but on my behalf talked about a couple situations and it turned out that other people were twisting things and telling no way people yeah. wouldn't do that yeah so so the thing here is this divide and conquer <laughs> everything they said was true but not told in the proper context right, not told in the context and all that you know here's the thing here's my you know why we're on this subject and this is just my opinion outside of murder rape or a, a crime you know like that you know, where it's not a violent crime against somebody. You know, I feel like if there's two working parties, things can be, generally speaking, can be patched up. I mean, outside of a personal crime against you or your family. You know what I mean? So when people get on these, you know, like, oh, I'm never talking to him again over something that is repairable, you know what I mean? And, and if we're not talking excess amount of money and all that. And so... I just think some people, they just don't want to be bothered. They don't care. They don't want to put the effort in. And what they'll also do is much like what seems like what happened in respects to you and Dot to Kelly, they'll actually add fuel to the fire you know, on the back end. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then I know that's happened in modern East. Yeah. I would well, never it happens that. everywhere. I mean, when the head guy dies, shit happens. I mean, that's in every yeah. system out there. You know, I, uh, for me, I don't work with the, when I say community, I mean the leadership community mm. or perceived leadership community, more of the, the leaders and the influencers at best. Um, you know, I, I, I did the reunion camp, the 10 year reunion camp and everyone showed up as well. I invited everybody. A couple of people chose not to show up, mm. um, you know, um, but they were all invited, which some people were shocked. I go, well, you know, Jeff Delaney wasn't there. You didn't invite him. I go, no, I invited him. He didn't want to be there. You know, I invited Remy Jr. He didn't want to be there. You know, uh, well, Brom- I, 
I like that when people put it on them, right? So it's one thing to be left out of everything or not mentioned, but there's a whole other thing. Hey, invite, and then they decide to come. That that's 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 on them. Much, right. That's yeah. a better way I, to do it, I think. I mean, what I, I did totally was agree. Like, this way, you I, can't look back and say like, no, you know, no, well, you yep, left no. somebody out. No, I didn't. Yep. And, and here's the thing: we, I had, uh, I remember, um, we had changed the dates because there was a schedule conflict. So I announced the camp two years in advance, and I go, all right, listen, I got to push it back one or two weeks, something like that. Does everyone okay about that? Okay. Well, Jeff Delaney initially told me he couldn't do it because there was a schedule conflict because it's always near a certain event that he did. I go, I reached out to him again. He never got back to me because if he truly, if he truly uh, chose not to do this because of the of the uh, schedule conflict, if moving the date, which we did, changed things, he needs to be invited again. Now, some people are like. You should, no, you already asked him. You shouldn't invite him again. I go, but he told me this date was bad. Mm. Now it's a new date. Well, he said no. I go, you oh, really don't. Ridiculous. You you know, and, and 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 people that you know by you, by the way. Um, but I'm like, you're. I, come on, you should know better. If mm. I, because all I don't want someone coming back who said you Tim Tim, you said it was the fifth. Well, I did, and I changed it to the fifteenth. Well, if I knew it was the fifteenth, I could yeah, have made it. Right, right. right. You yeah, know, yeah. so I don't want that coming back on me. I mean, no, that's funny. Because yeah, I wanted, right. I wanted everybody there. But well, it's just not right too. Not let alone the coming back to. It's just not right to do it that way. So yeah, you did, you did it right. Yeah, absolutely. But of you course, like, like uh, Ty said, you put it in their court, and yeah. it's ultimately up to them, right? If now, I, for the most part, most of the people I don't want to work with anymore because the only times they showed up was when my wallet was open, and once again, <laughs> when you were, there was no were, reciprocation. When you when you were handing out Ben Franklin's, right? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the here's the thing. This is how I am. I did the reunion camp. The reunion camp caused, uh, gave Michael Bates the ability to do his his uh, his Hall of Flame. It gave Dita the ability to do the East meets West, which then went the best of the West, or no, the best of the West, best of the East, and East meets West, a whole series of events because we did this in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Kelly comes into my office. While, while I mean, not Kelly. Uh, Dieter comes into my office while the camp's going. He goes, hey, Tim, I want to do this. So he's, he's trying to pitch me the idea of the best of the West. And he goes, so Tim, I'm going to do this. I'll be there, but I'm, we're going to do all this other stuff and I'm going to do it like this. And da, da, I'll be there. Da, 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 da. I'm like, Dieter, stop, <laughs> stop. You trusted me and came over from Germany to my event. You're damn right. I'm going to show you support. I don't, I mean, if it was just you and me and no one else showed up, I'd be there because you flew over for me and I'm going to do the same for you because I believe in reciprocating. There's a show. Reciprocation and re and support. Oh, no wonder why our sometimes we're in the oh. backyard basement. Here's, a, here's another one. I was supposed to do a tour in Europe, three countries. The first one, it was all based on me going to Italy. The host died. The host literally died. So um, then Poland backed out because they couldn't they couldn't float it. I was just about to pull the trigger on not going to Germany because Dieter and I were doing the double datu. And uh, Noah, wait, no, Noah, Noah. But you know John Escudero, right? Correct. His sister-in-law. I want to say that's Noah. Um, she was. She had just bought the tickets to go to Germany for me to teach there with Dieter. And she messaged me. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, I'm going because yeah, here's someone. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. She booked a trip from Israel to Germany. And it's like, there's no way I can't go now. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. in the worst case scenario, I'll break even. Who cares? And then actually became, we actually ended up talking about it because her, she and I were busting each other's chops and she goes real far. So I went far and she didn't like me making certain comments. And then, and finally I go, Dieter, tell her why I'm here. Well, he's here because of you, because you bought your ticket and he was, he was going to back out. And then, you know, I was like, Jim, I love you. I go, yeah, okay. I know. I know. <laughs> Not love it like that because you you're married, so we got to do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but you know, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, well, I digress. Yeah, reciprocation is a big one. There's a lot of ways you can reciprocate too. It doesn't have to be support. Support goes in a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, you know, no, well, that's the key I mean, word is support. Supporting it. I mean, oh my god! I mean, yeah. look at Jack Latour. How much he says about me in a positive way. He's constantly sharing my events. I don't ask him to do that. No, I know he's really good at that, like sharing people's event. Yeah, yeah. Him and, like, yeah. Oh, well, Tim gave me a lot of help at the beginning of getting out there. I go, yeah, I know, yeah, but definitely, but yeah, I, I, really I don't hold that over you. You don't have to do this the rest of your life. <laughs> he just likes, you know, he's always offering because you know, 
He got to know me. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Same thing happened with me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. Well, well, we're regretting that one, but we can work on that. Well, I, I really appreciate that. How the hell did I get him in the free agency draft thing here? <laughs> I, I well, I had a contract dispute. Okay. And I declared myself a free agent. There so we go. That's there we go. That's Our reciprocation that. is and support. There we go. Listen, um, I, and and when we talk about people on the shows, I, this is one thing I want to throw out there. It's probably come up a few times. Remember that FMA discussion for the discussion group on Facebook is not the same as the show. Two They're separate entities. Two completely separate entities. In fact, it the was show just... existed before the group. Yes. I had the show. I, I want to say I had a handful of interviews. And then I said, hey, why don't I start this group where I can I'll library the videos there that I ran. And, and then it just grew and grew and and all that but originally my intention was to put the live videos there from uh from youtube and not that it would be a, this group that is today I, yeah. I did not foresee that yeah so if you had a problem with something on there unless it was directly with dean don't blame dean for that shit <laughs> i know some people have thought about they they, they left the discussion group they they uh, don't want to do the show and all this other stuff. And I've since then, why? It's been few and far between. Like, we've only had a few people yeah. that have not wanted to do on the show. And generally speaking, I've, I've known the reasons even before they said no. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think some of the people that are saying no are would, would never want to be on there in the first place. It had nothing to do with the, what's oh, yeah, on that's, that's my That's my whole point. The yeah. people that have been disgruntled with the group is definitely a separate issue and a lot of that is because we don't let it be a playground well you know right. what fine go find right. yourself yeah. a place where you can act like a fool again and talk to each other how you want and that's okay and that has actually been few and far between matter of fact one of the comments that we received a lot that really resonated with folks is that they could go there express themselves without being attacked and if they were attacked it was immediately dealt with yeah, then there you go. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Well, so even I, if you, I, you know, I, if you have a, a Facebook group and, and you start it with one reason, it still has its own legs. I mean, I started uh, Arnie's Exploration with just the idea of connections to modern Arnie's, and it's sort of grown mm -hmm. from them. Um, we still try to mm -hmm. keep the same kind of, like you said, the, the feel for, you know, hey, this is a place where we're talking about this subject uh, and all the things related to it, but not for politics or picking on right. people or anything like that. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. But it still has, a you know, its own legs. Yeah. So you know, I sh who I should have. Well, no, it was too many people tonight. I should have thrown one out to Danny. That would have been fun. There you go. <laughs> so hey, but far as what you guys want to do, I'll I'll send Dot to Kelly. Um, I had all intentions of bringing him on. I I wanted you guys to bring him, and then of course I had a few others, but he was definitely on the list to bring on. As far as the whole modern niece theme episodes. Mm -hmm. However, though, if you want, if you guys want to do it together. Um, I'm fine with that as well. So well, I know Monday let me, nights. Let me, let me say this yeah. here. I didn't put you on today <laughs> to be on any show with you. I put you on today because I know you've been trying to connect with Kelly and there was the opportunity. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, I it, just, I, I just I'm all in. Know. Anything that promotes the art in a positive manner, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Well, yeah. Like I know Monday nights are a lonely night work for you. So if you um, want, well, no, Monday no. Night, it, Monday, I can, I can change nights. Right. If you're talking about all three of us, Monday's when we choose to do our show. Oh, I got you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so right. I could do another night. Actually, starting um, after this week, my Tuesdays and Thursdays are free for the next month. Now, um, I am leaving on the 15th for Florida for a week and a half. but um, So it does chop into three of those days <laughs> but i got I, so, I got eight it, tuesdays and thursdays i'm free after eight. Is, what is he what nights does uh he teach well obviously yeah. tonight i i enjoyed the visit with him but i think you know if you want to do it i think maybe it might sell or it might be a good uh track just to have a double dot two thing i don't need to be involved i mean i had a great visit and, and i'm looking forward to the next All time right, i just I, like i said I, I i'm not going to intentionally leave anybody out so. no I, I get that but you see what i'm saying i think i think that would be a good uh focus because of the history there uh, yeah you know what we could do that a matter of fact yeah obviously if he was teaching tonight i i don't know i'll, have to, I'll send him a message to just see what his schedule is um i can't imagine 
he's teaching. This is very day. comfortable. I, you know, I'd never met him before and talked with him, and it was just like you know, uh, very comfortable and, and welcoming. So I really yeah, we had him. I had him on. I want to say it's probably been it might be you know what it's definitely at least a year and a half ago we had him on and he killed it. I mean, it was a great show. He did a demo about his ranch. That I mean, a couple other things. I mean, he, you know, I mean, the crowd loved it. The, um, the audience. And so, yeah, I'm more than happy to do it again. So what I'll do is I'll send him a message and just see what nights he's not teaching or yeah. when he's, I guess, done since he's three hours behind us. Um, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, um, I, and, and I'm all down with all four of us doing it with you or all three of us together, well, all four of us doing it, period. It is a little rough because like when we did the show the other week and it was no no when you get more into it well, because I'm, I'm we're listening to Chad juggling. talk, then I'm listening to Ty talk, and by know, the time I'm juggling. talking, know, there's nothing left, you know. I know, I know it's it's a it's a juggling act. I I, I believe me, I know. And, and if you're the host, you're trying to give everybody, you know, equity as far as time and all that. It could be yep. very, very tricky. No, so, I get it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. but Ty was suggested that we just we do a double, double dot two. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, so. I, here's 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 my suggestion. You've got the three of us to 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 access anytime you need to. Mm-hmm. You know, well, not anytime. What? But have your topic. I mean, because like you know, maybe the topic you choose maybe doesn't fly for me because I don't, I might not have the experience in that. You know. Um, Maybe something would be better suited for, I mean, like if we're talking like the three of us versus the two of us, you know, maybe some things time might be better suited to do with Kelly than me and vice versa. Um, so like the, um, the internal connection, you know, there's, there's that, you know, yeah. Oh, you know what we could, yeah, that's an idea. Yeah. So, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of options, options there. So yeah, I mean, what I'll do is first find out his, his schedule. Um, yeah. That's probably the first thing to tackle. And figure uh, out what you want to talk about. And then yeah. see how that how relevant that is for all three of us. I mean, listen, I think having the three well, there was that other group we talked about, and I was I was willing to be part of it. Actually, you wanted to have four of us on. That and, would have been yeah. <laughs> and they chose not to, and that's that's on them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the the thing here is now. Kelly says he wants he, he's more than happy to do a show with you, you know. And we and we already talked about possibly all of us being on that show. I'm fine with all of you guys. Yeah. So yeah, I, you I, can I, easily do something there. Um, I and then if, and if it comes to like, hey, we need to do a part two. You know, let's talk more about the internal. Let we could do that. If there's a part three, maybe it's maybe it's more Tim and I mean, whatever, whatever. I mean, you know, man, how how come we're planning all these shows and you retired from it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I'm, I'm still not. I'm nowhere doing is. Uh, I mean, I jammed out a bunch in February just so it'd be easy street from this period on. So now do you, I can uh, kind of you have pick. things that you wanted to work on still while you're on uh, FMA to, with FMA. Yeah, but now I can hand pick. You know what I mean? Okay, that's cool. So. You're emeritus. Yes. <laughs> and free agent. Yep, yep. All you all are awesome. I appreciate all you do. Oh, that's thank good. you. That's nice. Who's the this check is in the mail, Eric. Oh, that was uh, that's Eric. Because uh, okay. it's the guy who's always at the gym, but actually decided to show up tonight. Sure. Right. Uh, then uh, Kara says good night. Oh, thank you. And then uh, continuation of what the future of modern is. Yep. That you know what that was the goal with the four. So what we can do is we can just certainly you know what we do. We can say we can tie that into whether when we all go on Kelly. I mean, Kelly can give us his perspective on the future. You know, you know, because here's the thing. Um, all right, so this will be since it's on our show. I'm going to make the comments. <laughs> um, you know, we can talk about what events we've hosted. Mm-hmm. We could talk about what we're doing on social media. Mm-hmm. But how? But the thing here is, okay, I've hosted X amount of events. Uh, I, well, I've got twenty five thousand views on this for this, and I got twenty five thousand views on that. How many students have we produced? Uh, how, how, how 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 are how is this? How is okay? So, uh, Chris, I, you know, the problem is you were getting Chris off so you can get the second portion of that, and maybe that show would have been better if if we did two separate shows and Chad. And Ty and I did a completely the show. The reason why I did that was because I didn't have enough content well, to run a show see, with just no increase. I think I think we could have, but I I would have. What I want to want to done is is 
I would have asked some tough questions from my point of view because I had already planned. I wasn't sure what you were going to have me do because one of the first things I would have sat there and I thought it was a little aggressive on certain points. I think, you know, because the question is, well, according to Datu, people, if they didn't follow this curriculum, I go, well, listen, if you if Remy promoted you to black belt, you would go up on the wall. Done deal. Done deal. It's 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 RPC. Remy Price is certified. Mm-hmm. Okay, that that boom. That's an easy one. What I'm saying is, a lot of times the art within your art people don't know the whole system because they just cherry pick what they want. Ty and I did this as a standalone program. We didn't cherry pick shit. Remy made us do everything. But I know people that didn't do the forms. And, to and, me, see, that's and again, you know, because, well, they were cross trainers. Simple as that. Cross yeah, trainers. Yeah. But and they don't really, want to say it that way. No, I know. And but what really brought out to me uh what is what in other words, what kind of ignited the question to me for the show, like what is Martin East, is that when we started when we started diving deep into that, it got me thinking, like, well, gee, are there folks out there that are quote unquote ranked, certified, however you want to word it, and Martin East, but perhaps don't really have like a lot of material, but just by virtue of the secondary or tertiary program. And that really drew an interest in me. Okay. Not for bad reasons or to, or not for ex- exploitation, but more or less just curiosity. Like, you know, did these folks know that? Were they aware of that? Or were they just victim of circumstances? Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. You asked, show right <laughs> you asked it. Here we go. Here's the here's the answer. No, they don't know that. And I mean, 95 so it's not their fault. 95 if you don't know what you don't know. That's what I mean. We can't right. fault them. You no, fault but them. what I can fault is people not listening when we're trying to explain this to people. Yeah, but I, I hear what you're saying, Doctor. But here's the thing, though. If you don't know what you don't you know. You know it's Tim, right? I mean, fault, come on. How, we how talk they gonna, on the phone, it's Tim, God damn you. <laughs> but how are they going to, but in other words, if they don't know what they don't know, and it's not their fault, and then they hear you trying to explain all that, it doesn't mean they're, it doesn't mean like they're just not listening to you. They might not understand what you're trying to convey. You know what I mean? Well, some of it is, uh, I get it. You always love your teacher. You always love your father. You, That's well, what I didn't mean, know. right? For loyalty. But, but at the same token, if we're talking logic, mm-hmm. okay. And we said, when, when people start talking about the art within your art, it's like, um, like what the question was, well, if modernist is red, well, why is modernist red? Isn't it a synthesis? I go, it was a program that, and this is another topic we should have on another show, but Remy put all this shit together and whatever he put together, like Jeet Kune Do, what Bruce Lee did, that's mm. what the art is. Now, I'm pretty sure Inasano still teaches the core art that Bruce Lee presented. Oh, I'm sure he does, yeah. But he added to it because it evolved. Oh, Bruce died way before his time. And Definitely he was, yeah. and I'll I'll be the heretic. He was nothing compared to what his potential was, because mm-hmm. he died way too soon. I mean, Ted Wong is the one who kept it kind of, you know, the fencing, boxing. Yeah. I, mean, John, I mean, you know, absolutely. Or um, uh, was it Jerry Petit? Jerry Petit. Petit. Jerry Petit. He was another guy who wanted to keep it the way he learned it. Whatever, whatever that mm-hmm. era but he was. He wanted Dan. Forget it. You got, yeah. you know, you got the conceptual, right? Which, but, but, but I'm pretty sure different. that uh, that Guru Dan still teaches the fundamentals. Oh no, 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 absolutely. In the academy, which is, by the way, should there be a, an academy? Well, in Jeet Kundo, which is a lot like modern Arnis, they have an academy. Yeah. But, but the thing here is this: ninety-five percent, I would say ninety-five percent, at least ninety-five percent of Remy's people learn it as the art within your art. And That's most my of whole them, point. like, there's probably a lot of people out there that think they have this, but really, they don't. No fault of their own. You, no. You know well, I mean? here's here's what I would question people: you pass the test, so you you had to go through the curriculum. Are you showing everything that you had to do to pass that test? And in the same way that Remy did, or did you just add? Like Eric Alexander reached out to me, Ty's teacher, because. Um, uh, um, what's his name? The guy, uh, Massachusetts Campos. Um, mm. he he blended it with. I came in. Richard Roy. Richard, Richard Roy, Roy yeah. did a great job of hosting camps, mm. and when he was asked to share to teach modern Anise, 
uh, to people is that I blend it with as much Arnis or much Tai Chi as possible. Right. You go, but that's not what Remy taught, and people wanted what Remy so taught. Be, right. That's got to well, be that, a eclectic blend, man. You got right. Tai Chi, <laughs> well, and it works. But but so here's the here's the thing I came up with uh, recently that it was just the way I kind of expressed it was, you know, a lot of people went with uh, make it your own, and that's great. Yeah. Um, but I want to make it my own from what Remy had. The core from, from anybody the core. else's one. You want to make it your own from the core. From the way that, right. So you have right. the original DNA sample, right. and then okay. you you know. All right. So here's here's my question. So okay. If I otherwise I would be following these other people. <laughs> no, no, no. And I get this. I get what you guys are saying. So here's my question. Yeah. Okay. How many people, whether it was a secondary program or a tertiary program? Yeah, we definitely got to do another show on this. Um, how many people? Uh, whatever, if it's 95%, if it's 88%, whatever, how many people that you know for actually sure got the core? I know they all were exposed to the core. If they became know, black, they girls. got it. Like they, I mean, regardless, if it was a secondary term. I would say 5% at most. Huh? I would say if we're talking about got the in, the core in its entirety, mm -hmm. and worked I would it. say, and worked it, probably 5%. If that, you we're see talking, my point? Yeah. If it's at that 95% of the quote-unquote make the art with the art or the secondary art, if, if you're saying, let's be, let's say 10% for argument's sake, if you're saying that 10% got the core, there's a lot of folks out there think they have and right. and, and they don't. So that's that, to me, I find fascinating. That you I like Brian. I like there. your point there too. I didn't want it before it disappeared, Brian. Yeah, go ahead. You read that. that. Oh go yeah, Brian. Brian. So Brian said that they might also think Tim, you are shooting for some power grad type BS. There's mm -hmm. so many con men out there that if they don't know, they might place you in that category. We've well, talked about this before. Well, it's listen. Okay, uh, let's. And, and so Brian, you may not have heard this, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list my credentials quickly that others don't have, and Ty can call bullshit. I mean, I had the only uh, full time academy while Remy was, or at the at the end of Remy's. There was three. Uh, Rocky Passwick was first. John Bryant was second. Uh, mine was the last. I was the only one that had an active academy when he passed. I produced 31 modern East black belts, which most people didn't produce any black belts, all the way up to third degree. Third degree would have been uh, just I've got multiple third degree black and it's black belt, then first degree. I have multiple third degree black belts. Who was a third degree black belt at the time before the tumor took an effect? Kenny Smith, Jim Lattice, Bruce Chu. All three of these guys, these are just three people that people may have known that were just, I was producing students the same degrees as these people. Um, and taught, by be producing, you mean producing and then they passed Remy's test from what yes. you taught them. So 31 right. Remy Prices certified black belts. Right. Um, I teach, I've taught over a thousand seminars around the world. I teach 35,000 classes. I continually produce black belts. I don't promote them. Matter of fact, we did our 65th anniversary camp. Uh, the same year somebody else did a camp, they did a closed, clo closed door black belt test. We did an open door black belt test. 50 people were promoted to black belt, three of which had never tested with us. They were for people who've been in the art, who've been con who got lost in the shuffle and kept orphan. their development going. Yeah, mm. orphan. Yeah. All right. So three people who stayed with the art, but were like orphans. Right. The yeah. rest, everyone else has tested with us one way or another. Now, seven of those, I will say, were junior black belts. Mm. But my junior black belts become adult black belts sooner or later. So once again, mm -hmm. if we're talking about one of the things I would have liked to talk about in the show, are you teaching just people your age? Now, at least Noah, he's a teenager, so that's a good mm -hmm. start. But mm -hmm. I don't think Chris has any kid students. I think they're all adults. So I'm going to guess they're adult, whether they're yeah. in their 20s or whatever. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you're going to teach... And you want the art to grow, you need to teach to kids. So yeah. um I right, can here see we go. him trying to do that though. I think he's I think he's I don't think he knows how to do it and he needs help. Yeah, I know, but he's gotta learn, right? He's gotta he's got, you know. Well, if uh, he's willing to learn, he could there's access to people that he could talk. Hell, I've I've talked to a whole bunch of people and he goes, uh, what Dan teaches the seminars are not the same at the academy. Makes I've heard sense. that many a times. Makes sense. Uh, okay. And then of course, uh, you know, fart like a wind passes <laughs> kidneys. So there we go. Oh, right, here we go. He's probably passed. And so here we go. Here's the thing too. Um, yeah, is there a codified written curriculum out of modern? Uh, we went over that There's last a bare minimum. Last episode. Short, short, short term. There was the black belt test that, that everybody took. Right. That's a bare minimum um, that, that gets you to black belt. 
And that's that's a, a core, if you will. So you don't have to do the written curriculum belt for belt that I had and right. that Eric and then Eric had and Ty had. Mm-hmm. But if you did your work, our, our theme of the show, that's actually <laughs> I think we should talk this modern uh, FMA talks, modernized chronicles. Do your work. Do your work. That, but if you do, no matter how you did it, if you did all the material, because even Chad, who didn't come up with us, mm-hmm. I never I didn't meet Chad until a decade after Remy passed, if not longer. Yeah. What Chad Bailey said was he would get the test sheet, and if there's stuff that he didn't know on the material or on the sheet, he would go and talk to people, say, what yep. the hell is this? Is it a different term I don't know, or don't I know the material? Yep. So here's another person who verified that there was a curriculum. Now, Bruce made a comment on your show, Dean, that there wasn't a written curriculum. He's half right. There wasn't a belt-to-belt curriculum that was right. organizational-wide. Right. That, that was, being yeah. said, there was the camp test. Yeah, but I think that I think that's part of the whole issue with this whole not people. Yeah. A lot of people that we have identified, which you're saying could be 95%, that don't have a core. I think it's do that. Yeah. Well, at, at the end of the day, though, they still got to like, – okay, I want to keep talking about doing the work. Okay. If you're given – okay, it, the problem is you run into – Yeah, but if you don't know – if you don't have the written thing, you don't know what work to do. No, but here's the thing, Dane. If you get if you know that that gets you to black and you didn't parse it out because you're not teaching it and get your people to get a, a stepwise pattern, that's on you. Yes. If, <laughs> if you're you given the – right. so, so think about this. Go old school. There were no belts, okay? Correct. So this is the list to become an instructor. You still have a curriculum. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, hey, most people. Are, okay, a little off the beaten track here. Yeah. When Remy died, who who was the highest ranking black belt? What were, what was your rank? I was six, which is seven. Okay, so if we're talking active, Dieter and I were the two highest active rank black belts. So and, at, at the time of his death, you and Dieter were six degrees. Yes, and and when I say active, I'm gonna let, let me let me say this. It's being interactive. Matter of fact, because I mean, Dan Anderson was also a six, but he he's he's changed okay, the here's story. My next question to you, and, but he hasn't. And, but he wasn't around for years. Okay, here's my next question. By okay. virtue of doing these interviews, Amonis, how did some of all these other guys all of a sudden get to whatever rank? So, uh, there was a coup, in my mm-hmm. opinion. So first sure. of all, we're in Germany. Remy is on his deathbed. Or, or perceived deathbed, because obviously 10 months later he passed. He he offered me the opportunity. He offered to promote me again. I turned it down. Mm-hmm. I said, listen, you're going to get back on the road. And, and I was there. I was the only American there at the time of Rez- Remy's diagnosis. I left and then other, and I just, I called home or called uh, Randy Shea, who was the chairman of the board at the time. I said, get him out of here before someone comes and gets rank. So what happened? A bunch of Americans come over and they all got rank. That's just the way it is. So wait, 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 wait. Let me understand this. Americans came over where? Went to Germany. Where? So Germany. we were in Hamburg, Germany. We had to take Remy to the hospital because we were doing the the. So the, Americans yeah. flew over to Germany, and yeah. by by virtue of the visit or whatever else happened across the table, they got rank. So they were all prom- those who weren't fifth degree were promoted to fifth degree, and then they took. Junior allegedly black fifth degree black belt was junior master, but if that was the case, I would have had it already because I had a I would have I I was above them, so any kind of title that came due to numerical rank, I would have had because I went Lacan, uh, Lacan, then Lacanisa all the way up to sixth degree, which was seven because black plus one, you know, levels. Um, so what they said was sixth, fifth degree was junior master. They mm-hmm. changed it to to full master, and then they uh, capped it there at five, which is weird because there's at least Dieter and I were the two active six degree black belts, and uh, they said that the masters of Tappy Tappy superseded everything, which would also include Remy himself because it superseded everything. Um, when was that put in place with the tappy tappy when Remy was in Germany and he had a brain tumor the size of a golf ball or baseball who, in his so head. who came up who convinced them or how that so, come about so Remy started he did give Gabrielle and Jeff Delaney a week before in Tunisia the master of tappy tappy but that was after I became Datu uh and Remy offered it to me in 99 I had turned it down uh I tested for my my sixth and and then he he gave it to me then again uh, so I took it. Uh, actually, I got a call from Kelly in 99 congratulating me. I'm like, dude, I turned it down. Oh, congratulations. Kelly, did you hear what I said? I turned it down. Whatever. Okay. So 
Um, so, um, I personally believe that the Datu ship was a um, consolation prize because of how he fawned over my test at the Michigan summer camp. Because when we did the test in Michigan, you mean the I master tappy tappy? You said Datu. Well, all right, or Dat. Oh no, Ma uh, I meant Master Tappy Tappy yeah. as a consolation no, because of my Datu ship. So I, I in the 2000 summer camp, I tested for six degree, and mm -hmm. it became Datu. And all of the would be masters of Tappy Tappy, except for Brian Zolinski, was present there. Remy made this huge speech on how I was the highest ranked black belt in North America, and no, it was the highest test in over 17 years. It may have been the highest test period. 17 years would have put it back to 83. But it was over 17 years, so who knows how far back that would have went. Um, so I guess what I don't understand is, why do we have a bunch of 8th, ninth, whatever, since it's passing? Who, who is, they weren't. Who, huh? they, they weren't. I know, so, but they are now. They're okay. Now, though. Okay, because now what's happening, all right, um, Ernesto, Ernesto Prezis, I'm the only one of Ernesto's, or I'm the only student of Remy's that I know of that Ernesto Prezis promoted me to ninth degree in Grandmaster. Um, but when he did that in 2007, not right after Remy died, because I was the mm -hmm. one that got Remy and Ernesto back together. Mm -hmm. um, when I did that, or when, when, when they did this, he goes, Tim, I can't promote you in my art, but I can promote you. Oh, no, I can't promote you in modern Arnis, but I can promote you in my art. Gotcha. So now they're having, the Filipinos are having or Roberto sign off on diplomas. But I, we've been with Roberto a bunch of times. And the last time we were there, he told us specifically he will not promote people that in, to black belt that has in underneath him that have not trained with him. Because we talked about his awesome. his his family, his own Arnis So uh, well, that they, awesome changed, right? The, well, the well, I don't know if they're giving the full story. They, they're they're saying the Filipinos look at him as being the leading authority. And I'll go back to this, what I've said about everybody in the Philippines. They missed the development that Remy did over here. They, the brothers didn't train, you know. So, and theoretically speaking, the brothers are my classmates because they learned from their father, from their big brother, Remy. And I learned from Remy. So the art kept evolving. And if, if Ernesto, who really had a global organization, which Roberto didn't, but, but the three brothers as a team spread Filipino martial arts over because Roberto kept things locked down in the Philippines while his two other brothers were traveling and doing stuff. So it was a teamwork. There's no question about that. But if Ernesto wouldn't promote people in modern, neither should Roberto because he doesn't do it. And, and as the, the example I hate using is the forms. Modernities had four forms in the Philippines. It came to the States. It went to 12 forms. Mm -hmm. It tripled the forms. Tripled. Right, right. Okay. And that's a small indication of how much the art grew. How much ever it since we got here. Right, 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 right. So, how would they have it? Now, I'm not saying they're not world-class martial artists and they're not grandmasters. I'm not saying that at all. Mm. What I'm saying is that if Ernesto wouldn't go across, I mean, like when he promoted me, it was Tim, I, and he promoted me to ninth and grandmaster with the intention to promote me in 10th, but he made it clear to me that it would not be in this. Now, I think what the thing here is some other people, it's a power shift and they're doing things and all this other. I mean, I, I think some of the people who've got these grandmasters are definitely uh, valid, but not for carrying the banner of modern Ernest. Uh, we've talked about it before multiple times. Mm -hmm. Kelly Warden is a world-class martial artist. Yeah. If anyone deserves to be a GM, he's one of them. Sure. But he doesn't wave the modern Ernest banner. No, he's I know right. the synthesis. Same thing yeah. with Dieter. Dieter does Comaton, modern, Anaya Screma, Jeet Kune Do, all blended in there. The D, If it was Deutschland Arnis, perfect, perfect. But uh, do, he represents modern East by name, but not necessarily by action. What what is Bruce currently? What's his rank? Jim well, he was a third, but the the guys promoted him to eighth. But he's he was a, a grand master in kung fu because he he inherited his style of kung fu. So I think a lot of people just would go GM, assuming that applied to the the food. Like, hey, listen, I'm Dr. Tim, and if I'm teaching Brazilian jiu jitsu, and people, oh, it's Dr. Tim I'm teaching Brazilian, and like you know, no, it's it's. It's white belt Tim. <laughs> white belt Tim is showing a few side control moves, right? Yeah, now. you know, and yeah. but but the thing, I'm I'm not Datu in my Kuntao, I'm not Datu in my yeah, Sikaran, yeah. I'm not yeah, Datu yeah. in any of that shit. You know, so, so let me ask you this. Okay. Did 
Remy, no, was if he went to school and he was going to rank somebody, and the person was an existing fourth degree in Parker Kempo, for example, mm-hmm. would he would he match their rank? Oh, there's that. No, so that never happened. No, okay, no, okay, no, okay. no, no, no. So, okay. uh, Ty, uh, how do you feel about that one? No, I've never seen him do that, but there was some some other considerations. Like, for example, yeah. you could be a, a camp host for multiple years and you got your own school. Maybe you're a grandmaster in your style. You would be uh, granted ranks here and there and sprinkler way up, whether or not you tested or worked on stuff because it was out of support and maybe administrative. Uh, and I get that. I get that. That's good business. Uh, and you enabled a bunch of people to get the art and get promoted. Yeah, okay. so I, I kind yeah, of get that, live. but it is different. I could live with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, I mean, hey, part part of what we do is, okay, the okay, the first if you go like what the Kembo guys tell me, the mm. first five degrees are what you get out of the art. The last five degrees are what you put back, give back. Mm. What if someone's giving back early? Mm. What what? There's nothing wrong with that, you know. No, absolutely not. No, so I've no. got no problem about that. Right. Um, so and it wasn't uh, all at once; it was sprinkled up too. So it it, yeah. it was actually what. I don't okay, uh, but here's what I'll give you: Grandmaster Ron Browning taught Guy Metzger, trained him to become the UFC champion, cornered him in the UFC, mm-hmm. box for Don King. This guy's got mad skills. Would teach with Remy, and actually, actually, if it was just the two of them, you wouldn't need Wally J because he's at that tier of grappling. It's a different vibe, definitely a different vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but wouldn't need wouldn't need George Dillman, wouldn't need Wally J. The two of them together would tear it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Remy only had him, he only promoted him to a first degree. <laughs> okay. And there's a whole bunch of people that were like that. You know, that they may have been black belts, but they were only black belts. They weren't, they're were either Lacan Dayang or they were Lacan or Dayang Issa, male or female, you know. All right, here's um, the next question. Okay. So you have these different factions on Marnie's. So I'm trying to make an association here to, and it might not be the best one. To like you, talk about, you mean currently these factions? Yeah. So, okay, so, so uh, are there really factions or are they just individuals? Well, let's throw in under one umbrella of factions individuals. Okay. Again. So my association as far as compare and contrast is going to be the KI. So the Grand Tatong died. Yeah. Five pillars. Sometime or another, those five pillars either became GMs, PGs, whatever. But under them, they could rank whatever, but they never went past, obviously, uh, GM, not to my knowledge, anyhow, mm-hmm. not to, to the best of my knowledge. So let's look at okay. So with the different factions, whether they're individuals or they're, it's actually a faction, or is it, I, I guess it's safe to assume that they have to be eighth, ninth, tenth levels, right? Because they're is, is that pretty much the situation? Obviously, like for instance, you're ninth degree through Ernesto. Okay, and I was a sixth degree seven under, slash six under through Remy. Remy. Re- correct. So let's look at so Bruce uh, GM Bruce is eighth, right? Currently, but he went. But I mean, that just happened. That just happened. And who ranked and who gave him? Dan and Brian. So Dan and Brian gave Bruce at the camp that okay. you were at. Yep. Oh, I must have. I must have left. Okay. Um, the one that just happened. The one where I met you. Oh, that one. Yep. Got it. Got it. Got oh, it. I mean, okay, that was, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, they got, so Jam Bruce for Arnis International is eighth mm-hmm. degree. Okay. Through them. And the same thing with Chad with Progressive Arnis was, he was first promoted oh, by, by Bram and then recently about Dan and Brian. I don't know what he was with Remy, but I know uh, Bruce, I think, was third is what we decided. Yeah. Th- he was a third degree with Remy or fourth okay. level. Yeah. Which is fine. Well, yeah. Okay. Fourth, yeah. Okay. All right, that that I was just curious on now. Right? If you want to talk about what the ranks were at the time before the the um, the tumor, they're all thirds and fourths. Yep. Okay. Okay. I don't think anybody's been been hiding that either. Like even I, I've been clear, right? I was I was second, which is third level. I mean, he asked me to teach uh, to test like three, two times, two or three times in separate years. Uh, for third, and I just didn't because I thought he was going to be around forever, and I wanted to do it perfectly. So, uh, real Eric, what questions did you have? Uh, oh, then yeah. let me let me do this. Uh, Iron Palm playing uh, 
Not specifically, although Remy um, could uh, could hit you that Remy way. I could do that stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, is there a war conference? The original <laughs> uh, there was a tattoos things, group where they talked about things, but they didn't yeah. always agree or get along. So, yeah, yeah. yeah no. So uh, you must here, read the child you know, conditioning. Yeah, sure Renee. Thing. Um, is there a master alpha, master beta in the system? <laughs> master, master uh, there, beta. There's a master baits, but that's another story. And then the highest ranked Canadian. Um, oh well, God. if you talk about who's the best Canadian, that's going to be uh, Craig Mason. Who's if the highest talk, ranking? Oh, okay, yeah. But so if you're I mean, talk about who's ranked, Brian Johns allegedly is a seventh degree. Well, actually, or no. Who's no, the actually, highest no. ranked direct from Remy? In, in, oh, no, in no, Canada. Okay. Yeah, who's if we're talking. Well, there's nobody directly from Remy. Um, well, I mean, Brian Johns, maybe, yeah, but that like would have only been a black belt. Like something like that. Something like that. Um, so Craig Mason is a ninth degree through us. Was um, it, what was his rank? Ninth degree. Craig Mason is ninth degree? Through us, yes. Craig, oh, Ty, wow. and Chad, they're all the guys that take over in case something happens to me. I, I know. And, I just, I just and had, they will no, prove idea, the I had no idea he was that high. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Craig is, Craig is good. Craig's really, he's he, actually, he probably moves the best with me of the group because he spends the most time with me. He's going to Brazil with me. He's going to go to Barbados. He's goes, you, you know, and just, yeah, and he yeah. works it all the time. Um, he doesn't have broken hips or broken feet. <laughs> he's, Ty's got broken hips. I got a busted up foot and, you know, and then uh, someone else. You mean he's younger. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a few years younger, but, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the thing here is if you think about, okay, listen. I was a six slash seven. That was the highest rank at that time. Right. Now there were some Filipinos. And this is from higher. Remy's saying, and that was quoted by someone who doesn't like Tim. So just saying it's not not just uh, him saying that. You know. So oh yeah, I mean, and and the, so if you look at archive.org, there was an article about this, and then people started busting. Oh, well, if it came from it was Lisa McNannis wrote the thing, uh, the report. It was a report on the camp. Oh, if she wrote that you're shooting yourself in the foot. No, you have no clue what you're talking about because <laughs> she wrote a chronicle of all the camps she attended. It was just, hey, what happened? That was it. Yeah. Um, and and I, she wasn't a fan of mine, and she still put it in there. Because, you know, and it's like, um, and people really don't, I'm like, well, another person tried to say, well, the punctuation was wrong, and why would she write these things? Because she was reporting on what Remy said. It yeah. wasn't her words. I mean, it was her words because she wrote them, but she was she she was inspired by someone else to write them. The the boss, you know. Um, so and that was verified by what, was it Roland? I forget who. Well, there, everybody that. was there at that camp. Right. You know? right. Like I said, all of the would be masters of Tappy Tappy, with the exception of Brian Zawalinski, was there because Brian didn't go to many events. Mm-hmm. He would go to the camps, and and actually, I I went to a couple of the Massachusetts camps. I only saw him there once. But, I mean, he really didn't go out of his area. I mean, because this wasn't his profession. He only recently retired. He worked in corrections. He couldn't, and he had he had uh, custody stuff going on with his daughter. So he didn't travel. I mean, did he go to a few things on the road? Sure, but we got to put that in perspective. And most people didn't travel. And this went back to the whole thing we're talking to Chris. Well, how people not know? Well, first of all, we talked about this back then. We yeah, didn't have pretty, the internet. Yeah, pretty, and if yeah, you didn't yeah. travel, who would know who the hell you were? There's only a few names that everybody knew. Yeah. Hmm. There wasn't a database. I mean, hell, Dwayne Rainier did two camps, and he never gave the diplomas out for either camp because I have people still waiting for those diplomas. Wow! So I had to get I had to get black belt diplomas for my students from Remy. So um, yeah. yes, uh, respectfully, what a mess it is. But I mean, that's just I mean, but hey, it's Filipino. What do you expect? I mean, and it's people, it's, humans. It's not it's not a system that is very method methodical about writing stuff down and all this other stuff or even mm. terminology <laughs> and and this shit didn't exist let's think about it. uniforms belts none of this shit existed until until after world war ii and the filipinos specifically remy looked to see what the japanese karate was doing because it was more popular in the philippines than filipino martial arts and he took everything that they were doing in their day. so all these titles that was all bu- bullshit it's all bullshit mm. they just copied what everyone else did mm-hmm. the uniforms were the sport, the uniforms that they wear over there were based on sport karate USA uniforms yeah. that people, you know, I, there was that thing I put up with Chuck Norris wearing them at the end of uh, like uh, the uh, entered the octagon or whatever the heck it was. Right. And he, the whole demo team's wearing that stuff. You think Century Martial Arts made those uniforms for an obscure martial art called our niece that they never heard of? I'm guessing not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going on. See, here's the thing, I guess. 
you know, more and more I have this conversation, you guys, is what I'm getting to. I mean, we should definitely do another show. Um, I mean, I could just pull a bunch of this stuff out for uh, enough content for show. But I just think that it's very easy from the outside looking in to look at Modern Nice and just be overly confused as to who got what, how they get what, how they get their rank. You, you know what I mean? And, that, and well, I'm not trying to be negative. Stuff, you know? I'm I not mean, trying to be negative, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying from the outside looking in, you know what I mean? Um, so well, I can but, understand that there could be people out there that are quote unquote modern these black belts or whatever, who by virtue of having these interviews and getting exposure of information from a bunch of people that they might not necessarily have all the core stuff, but yet, and who knows what they're teaching? You know what I mean? So, well, I mean, I would say, mo listen, I think everyone got a bit of the core. Mm -hmm. There's no question that people got bits and pieces of the core. The yeah. problem here is when, if, we if can you, all, you know, if we were, you know, we can all play together and we get on the same thing. There's enough there mm -hmm. that, 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 that has happened because there is enough of that core. Yes. And then just right. back to the kids' comment. Yes, Jackie, the youngest student she has is four. That's awesome. The oldest is 72. Awesome. Yeah, I got like a three and a half or right now. I, I recently went up to four. I still got a couple of young ones like that. But I mean, this is the stuff we need to look at for the future. So how do you fix uh, fix it for the future? Well, you just that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's get good. on that's board or get out of the way. That's, that's so what here, well, just to give Kurt a little background. So what I was playing, what I was trying to do, Kurt, was getting kind of the quote notables together, so they could work together and kind of formulate uh, something beneficial for the future. I mean, the younger folks, younger generations coming up, but it kind of fell by the wayside. Uh, long story short, or short story, <laughs> and it's not my fault because <laughs> I, I came, to, I've, I've come to the table on more than one occasion willing to work with people um and a bunch of people i've just i've, I've you know you give people uh yeah give people too many time too many opportunities and uh you know when they do the same thing over and over and over again you know i i yeah. just you know i'm done with it. okay what did Brian, uh what did eric say dr tim i've discussed those questions with you, such as the difference of what yeah, was taught um yeah, yeah, yeah sounds yeah. like it's a legit question yeah yeah, yeah. listen if people are willing to it, it Here's the thing. I think the problem boils down to is that um, it's either about ego or money. Hmm. Okay. It really, I, I think now I'm with, with people, you know, I think if people were open about this and they were, they put their egos at the side, we could come and talk about things and say, Hey, listen, you know, talk about logical things. I don't like the truth at times, but I'm, I'm willing to deal with the truth. I don't like it when I'm wrong. I don't, but I'm willing to. Are you willing to at least engage in a conversation? I mean, well, and... here's the thing. I've, I'm, I'm a person that's more than that. I, time and time again, I've been come to the, I'm willing to come to a table, giving someone the chance to change my mind on something, providing they give me that same chance to change theirs. Mm. But if it's just going to be a monologue and not a dialogue, I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just going to tell you what you're wrong. Well, then don't even waste my time. From, from my perspective, I miss the, the old days. We're all coming up, and a lot of these guys came up the same time as me. Mm. We were all geeking out and sharing and, and doing all that stuff and talking about the good things and talking about what we learned and sharing this and this interpretation, that. And it was all, there was nothing in the way, right? Because oh. there was no, uh, nothing perceived to be lost or ego. It was, you know, we're all geeking out. It was awesome. Yeah. I miss that. I still do that. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think it's part of these guys got certain levels and they're kind of like well i don't need to i don't need to do that anymore i am such and such level and i you know what i mean which i guess falls into ego yeah. well there was also another thing there with uh with what happened at the time several of them got all sucked into a, a or developed or bounced off each other there was a, a, a an understanding between the masters tappy tappy right and and what the that master meant. tappy tappy click sounds like it's an abomination well, there was a, there was a, there was some sort of yeah discussions going on there, and, and one of them will tell you they were told to say X, Y, and Z, um, and 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 you know that that sort of a echo chamber there, regardless of of the truth, 
that closes things off in my mind. You know, the, here's the thing. Um, I think Remy had every intention to promote them to Masters of Tappy Tappy, but the Masters of Tappy Tappy were never, were never. Okay, so I, I'm going to tell you my story, and then it's up to you to do your fact checking or, or believe me or not believe me. Remy was in Tunisia. I was teaching in England. We were meeting in Germany. While he was there, he was showing signs of 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 something going on. He had his a, a pullover. I got him upside down, inside out, and backwards. Ooh. But but the Germans said, oh, we thought he was joking. You know, okay, whatever. Sure, he's stumbling a little. He's wearing his clothes funny, but he's joking. Okay, but he promotes he promotes Jeff Delaney and Gabriel Roloff to Matt, fifth degree black belts and master Tappy Tappy. Mm. Right? All right. So he comes into Germany. I'm waiting for a week. I'm there. I get there before they do. He comes on. The day we're supposed to do the camp, he's not feeling go. We take him to the hospital. He's told he's going to die. Okay. In the room, he goes to me, Tim, I will promote you again. If he didn't want me to take over and do something, why would he offer to promote me? If the masses of Tappy Tappy were the end all be all, then he wouldn't have offered this to me. Because the thing here is what has always been constant in modern Arnis is numerical rank. No title superseded anything. Dan Anderson became a six-degree black belt, and a couple of years later, he became senior master. What do you give someone when you don't want to promote them? You give them a title, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I was promoted and got a title simultaneously, and the title of Datu, leadership, was something that was not part of that promotion. It's not a rank-driven title. Okay. If Remy wanted me to take over, or if Remy didn't want me to take over, he wouldn't have offered it to me. Then the Americans come over after I leave. Things that some of the Americans weren't even there. So Chuck Goss and Brian Zawolinski were not over there. It was Jim. No, no, actually, I think it was it was Jeff Delaney, Randy Shea, and Kenny Smith. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they went over, and whatever happened, happened. And the thing here is you go back to the beginning, Filipinos, you have to ask them a question multiple times to get the right answer. Secondly, this guy had a tumor that size in his head. Yeah, oh, so God knows what was going on. But if Remy wanted them above, why do you think he stopped at fifth degree? Yeah. Because yeah. I was a six. Right. And then they capped their promotions. They capped their belt promotions for years at fifth degree black belt. And I can believe that initially they went over there just for good purposes. Heck, I, I was broke at the time as a grad student. I was wanting to go over there just to be with my friend, my mentor, my, my adopted mm. martial arts grandpa. But I'm glad I didn't because of what happened. Now, yeah. there's one person in particular chairman of the board, medical, financial advisor, executor of the will. He allegedly got a, in, uh, arrested for embezzling millions of dollars, and then he was bailed out, and then he disappeared. And people tell me they think he's either in a non extradition country or he's in a shallow grave because he may have been gambling at the uh, Chinese establishments, and they made an example of him. But he was the leader of this group. Of the established happy? Master, yeah, yeah, he was the, the co grand master, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so days before Remy passed away, his entire state disappeared. All the trust funds were liquidated. How do I know this? Because Roland Dante's put me in communication with the kids and they told me this and they showed me the bank support. They just, all of a sudden, all the money got liquidated overnight. So, and nobody knows who did it? I think we know who did it. And I think a lot of people got blamed for stuff that they didn't know that they didn't do. That so, you know, they, they were trying to blame a lot of stuff on, on Jeff Delaney. And I'm, I'm not a fan of Jeff, although we've always gotten along when we're around each other. Mm -hmm. But it was easy to put it on him. And I think there's yeah. a lot of stuff like he he had money. Jeff he, had he, money. He was already wealthy enough. <laughs> but allegedly, Remy sent Chuck to go after him. And Randy Shea called him up and said, don't go. Um, and maybe it's because all the money that Jeff was sending back was going into Randy's pocket. Who knows? You know, yeah, um, that's, man. but it'll be, but the thing is when people have an agenda, they push it and they do whatever they can to protect it. And the mm -hmm. Mots as a whole had a marching order, even to the point where I talked to Chuck, well, I almost quit. Well, why didn't you, you know, you know, if, if you thought that Jeff was such the antichrist that he was, you either stand with him or against him. And if you don't take a stand against the person and he's in your camp, you're standing with or behind the person. Maybe. 
Chris, uh, Chris Nally had a question that he's been patient. I figured, okay. but I think there's no good answer, Chris. Mm. There is everybody knows, but yeah, there's no one singular list. list. Tim's got his list. I got my list of people that I produced. I tried. Promoted. I tried. It's a tough but, one. Um, the, the problem is people don't want to be part of it. Well, that in, in Remy got around. You, you just don't even imagine how much Remy went to camp seminars, everything oh and God. promoted on his own. So who is managing that? The closest person would be Remy in his head. Oh, I mean, just there's lack of hundreds. that. We're talking hundreds or thousands. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, listen, you know, people tried to say that uh, – well, Jeff Delaney tried to tell Rich Parsons, well, uh, you know, can't test didn't happen at camp. I got or outside of camp. I go, I got black belt tests that happened in my school and I got video of it. Don't tell me the shit didn't happen. You might not be used to it. I mean, and actually we had um well, who uh Randy's guy. Uh Randy, no, uh the guy from Texas. Um Ed, Ed Kwan. Ed Kwan is like, oh, uh, well, I didn't think we did camp tests in in, in the Texas camps. I'm like, come on. I, we were there, but it was like, yeah. you know, but the thing here is there was tests all over the place. It's just like Texans didn't know what was going on because they were the, mm. they were the, the, the catch up. And if they didn't have a, if they didn't have, so so Ty had a mentor that came from the East coast that could tell him about the dealio and say, no, no, you can do it here. You can do it there whatever. These right. guys were all brand new and they just were, whatever they were heard or thought they heard, that's what they believed. It was weird. Cause I mean, I, I'm sure he was at things where I tested my students tested <laughs> I mean, this is for blacks. Um, so I, I, I was confused about that, but you know, for, so I was tested, you know, tested in front of Remy and passed with him. And I only had that happened in Texas. That's at least three tests that I got ranked in Texas. Plus the ones he asked me to test at plus the ones that my students tested at. So, <laughs> but yeah, but, but Tim's point is valid, right? You, you, so if you didn't know that happened, you didn't know it, which is weird, but okay, that happens. Um, but also, you know, all of these places, there were times that people pr Remy pr uh, promoted people outside of camps and to, and and I got and promoted in the airport once. Yeah. No, I'm sure that all the places he traveled yep. and paths he yep. crossed, whether despite the venues, right? I'm sure. Or Rocky will tell you stories too about what Remy said to him. I mean, so that you know, there's lots of stuff going on, and Remy, it's his art; he can do what he wants, so that's all fine. And and no one would, you know, say if if he promoted X, I don't think anybody is saying that he didn't do that. So I don't think that's the problem. It's what does that mean? Yeah. And there, well, you know, as, as any art, I have a saying, there's black belts and there's black belts. Which one are you? And listen, Remy, Remy encouraged people. But if you heard, if, if, if I don't, listen, I'm, did Remy put, did Remy say things that make people feel good? Well, yeah. But did people also think more, look, read more into it than they should have been? Oh, I'm sure they did. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And sure uh, I, and and it's like well you know or or heard what they chose to hear. Mm -hmm. I don't. I can count. Uh, you know, I can't even count the number of times he called someone their protege or are you becoming the next pro professor. Uh, and some people I think ran with that. And I'm like, he's just encouraging you. It's it's okay. Hey, I was a protege, but I didn't get it twisted thinking that a right. protege was right. that all. No, I, mean, no, no, I was no. one of the proteges. Okay, that means he was pouring extra material into me right. and giving me extra right. attention. Great. Great. He introduced me and Raymond as his top representative, top guys. You need to, if you're in Texas, you need to train with Ty and Raymond. Raymond uh, introduced us to that. We that we knew what it was, and we're like, okay, that we appreciate that. That's awesome, but we didn't make a big deal of it. But I only bring that up to point out that this is the kind of thing that he would do to mm. enable the art, encourage people, bring them in, right. all of those good things. And if you took it in that vein, it's all good. You're not going to get your, you're not going to get spun out of, out, yeah. you know, out. But I mean, you got to think about it. How many people in the in the eighties and nineties, and the two and up to two thousand, really understood the Filipino dialect? I say and, very few. And, and the and then throw on top the cultural aspects of what's being said. Yeah, no, I say very few. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it could happen to anyone. It, it could have happened to anyone. You know, um, the the. You know, I, I think a lot of people took advantage of Remy's situation. Um, I think he, um, I think he got away. With, people got away with some stuff because he didn't necessarily understand what they were saying. No, that makes you know that makes yeah, I can see that. I mean, I've I mean, heard about belt promotions that were done in a foreign language. And was not the rank that he he wanted, where he spanked them a certain amount of times, and the degree was done a higher higher. You know, first of all, 
I've only know of one person who got spanked by Remy. Or I've only seen one person in person get spanked by Remy, and I was on the reception receiving end of the damn stick. But <laughs> I do know he did it once in a great while. But you know, when he promoted me, he hit me X amount, he hit me six times. And allegedly he hit somebody else a certain amount of times, but the belt promotion was a belt above that. And because they may have perceived the title different than a numerical rank. Mm. So um, I'm not going to, you know, I mean, with everything going on, who knows? But I mean, if somebody yeah. got confused, he often didn't correct them too. Again, that's a cultural thing, you know, like, okay, they can do the wrong thing. And just like he would say, Hey, you could do that. Didn't mean you were right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Or that what he wanted. Right? But, right. but at the end of the day, you know, at the, he could also make it right down the road. Yeah, you know, because yeah, he, he took the long view. Ah, uh, you know what? Okay, they got. Uh, let's say someone got a belt sooner than they were supposed to. It is okay, Tim. No big deal. Why not? It'll be longer for their next belt. Right. I mean, because uh, listen, I use, we use a belting system. There's mm. some kids I hold back because they're not ready. There's sure. other kids I push forward because they need that emotional boost. Need, right. At the they end of the day, boost. at the yeah. end of the day, black belt's the great equalizer. Yeah. Or you know, and, you know, pick your one. It could be fifth is a great is a great equalizer. Any any one that you want to pick. And and we well with the last camp we did, I you know I said all right, this is the 65th anniversary of the art. If people are not ready that weekend, my question to you is, would they be good in three to six months? Because there's only one 65th anniversary, and I trust you all as teachers to mm -hmm. do what needs to be done to get them to that level. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, nah, we're all solid. But if someone was no one came to me and said somebody needs three to six months. Everyone was like, boom. But if it was, if there were like three months of more grooming would have made the difference. Hey, I mean, look at all the shit we did with COVID had to make up for time wise, you know? So yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but you know, this definitely needs to be a show of some sort. I don't yeah, know if it's I a show that I, you need to host or we have here or both. I don't know. Yeah, we can make it. It sounds like we're doing it right now though. Whoever's stuck on yeah. it. I know. Well, but so yes, yeah, so we, better, we still got uh, 20 people watching. That's crazy. Really? They yeah. must have gone to sleep. They fell asleep. How many people are watching? 20. 21. That's 20 insane. people are still watching this? Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're coming up on three hours. I had no idea. Why? It's because of no, Dean. No, we definitely. It's here's the thing. I got yeah, I I don't watch it on Kelly YouTube. Dean. That's right. <laughs> I jotted some notes. Oh, my goodness. Hey, wait a minute. Look who's here. Who? Manuel. Yeah, Manuel Hart. Yeah. Hey, brother. How you doing? Nice. He's a good guy. I jotted some <laughs> notes down for the next potential show. and it's Zach, you're hanging in there. Brian, hanging in there, too. Awesome. Oh, wow. Hey, Brian, where I, are you I from? I, where, I, where Brian people, um, I saw the occasional comments, but I didn't think people... I, uh, so are we making not, sense, all the people that are still here? Are we making sense? Or, or, or no, what, what's going rambling. on? Because We're just <laughs> rambling. There you go. Kurt, Kurt admits it. All right, good. Sticking around for Dean. Hey, Jackie, sticking around for Dean. That works, yep. Hey, Jackie, you missed the meeting Saturday or Sunday. If you need a copy of it, just let, let me know and I'll send it to you. Meeting? Oh, yeah, we did our first virtual conference for the World Modern East Alliance I'll to talk uh, about what we've been doing, where we're going. The member uh, organizations. So, yeah. you, so you and Jackie did? No, the no, member, all the member out. schools. Jackie missed out. Ty Ty had a, something he had to take care of. So yeah. any of those who were invited, well, I, I, I sent out an email. Not everyone got, it's kind of well, last minute. Me and Jackie were having a separate meeting probably. <laughs> okay, there we go. From Augusta, Georgia. Okay, I'm going to be down in Jacksonville. I don't know how far that is. A couple weeks. And then uh, Zach, for the most part, PG Ty looks tired. I am tired. Send you an, All right, send, so send you an email. I'm going to send Kelly. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Or did you just send me an email? Okay, whatever. But uh, I'm going to ask Kelly what days work for him and kind of go from there. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen. Uh, so, Dean, thanks for stopping by. Oh, as no, I appreciate writer, you, uh, it's like a Stanford train wreck, Brian, Brian, right? <laughs> it's a fascinating thing. It's like a train wreck. Well, you know what? It can't be. It can't be any worse. I mean, listen. Every every, every style does this. If it was know. bikini, we try to kill each other, but we're not trying to kill each other because <laughs> because basically the modernist people have no balls. But it's it's ki. They they do the I'm, 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 I'm joking. Aggressive. Yep. Okay. No. okay, what is this Point. protege? Isn't uh, isn't the one who's taken? Is just one that they're being guided. guided it doesn't mean any. It doesn't. Thank you. Right. 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 Yep, you got it, Danny. Uh, can't like keep always. my thoughts off the screen. So much information. Uh, <laughs> no, we'll resend. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, and then, uh, good night, <laughs> good Jackson. Night, Jim. Jim. Yeah, <laughs> kiss my ass, Renee. <laughs> and dumpster <laughs> fire. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
No, we're not dumpster fire. That's Paulo. Yeah. <laughs> Paulo is a dumpster fire. I'm not dumpster fire. Uh, we should learn from these lessons, though. Yeah, think yeah. so, Brian. But you know what? It seems to happen over and over and over again. We're not know? learning. Right. <laughs> listen, listen, here's the deal. My organization, every member is registered. There's an uh, They get an ID card with a number. All the rank promotions are are there. I can only be responsible for my Marshall family. Yeah. And if and every you do have a way forward too. It's yes. not us, but we're to help with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so every group should do the same thing. Yep. Okay. It's up to them. I like, like we if we came up, hey John Savage, thank you. Um, if we came up with uh I mean, I, I don't care about the other groups anymore. I, why? Because I need to focus on mine. You I don't tried care about to be Jackie's group. No, what? You don't care about Jackie's group? Jackie's part of our association. Right. Oh, okay, good, good. No, no. She, um, she's a WMA member. No, the thing here is, I okay, I don't care about Brian's. Well, Brian's garage group. I don't care about Dan and his school. I don't care about Bruce Chu and his group. I don't care about what Dieter's doing because they've got it themselves. They got to do their own thing. What I care about is to help and support my people. Now, people do have to do their portion of that. I got to be here for them. And if I can work with some others at the same time, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but the thing here is, um, you know, at my... Um, <laughs> yeah. Dog ate his card. Okay, yeah. You know, my, uh, my thing here is, is real simple. I am tired. I, I need to take care of my, the members no, of our you. organization. So, and I'm, I and, care about and, Bruce, though. I think Bruce, I care about Bruce. You know, it's it. Bruce has got to do it. No, no, no but well, I'm he's saying, saying organization. He's not saying, I'm saying organizations. You know what? Yeah, yeah. No, I, know, was, I, know, I, know, if, I know what you mean. I know. What you if mean. Bruce was to say, "Hey Tim, can you can me can you help me out?" No, I know. I know you. Would I'd help. be there. I know. I know. Yep. I know you if would. any of these guys. I mean, hell, Anderson used to call me up all the time for technological and business stuff, and it's like, hey, I, I you know, my phone was always ringing for different people, and you're like, hey, where do you get this? What are you doing for? Hey, awesome. I didn't know uh, Jackie was part of your guys' group. That's awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. she supports a lot of people, and then she can do that. We don't hold any, you know. And, and, no, and, yeah, and guys, exactly. I support Bruce yeah. and his people as well. It's not dentured servitude, right? Right, right. Man, Tim zaps my energy as well. <laughs> I'm gonna say this again. Hey, I thought you were supposed to go to Spain, Renee. Yeah, and stay there. Stay there, Renee. <laughs> Renee, aren't you going to Spain? <laughs> Come on, uh -oh. Renee, you go. Now they're stirring it amongst themselves. See, that's Isn't good. growling dog going to sing. You know, Dean's got, you know, Dean, you know, here's the thing. If Renee's not nice, I'm going to tell his kid who his real father is. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it on FMA Talk. <laughs> wow. I'm joking. His his wife, his girl's got way too much taste to hang out with me. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do that. I'll send, I just sent, um, there you go. There you go. Dr. Oh. Kelly at um, an email. There we go. Ty and Casey in June. Oh, there that's you go. Oh, that's Bruce nice. August, oh, you got Bruce coming? That's awesome. I, I mean, oh, I you know, figures you're going, Bruce. okay, you're going June. Fi June, Finland. My okay, people I didn't understand. Finish, Once people. again, message me. I'll give you the contact for the people in, in Finland and Pori. Yes. Why did I think he was going to Spain? I don't know. Oh, Lord. Whiskey and you guys. Uh, end of the night. <laughs> I, need, I need a copy. Okay. All right. Listen. We'll, we'll call it. Dean, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, yeah. I just sent a message. I'll hear back from you tomorrow, and then I will yeah. absolutely get a hold of you in touch base. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks again, guys, for bringing me on. It was fun. All right. Thanks. Catch you later, brother. See you, Dean. <laughs> All right. Dim Branco. Dim Branco. Dim Branco. All right. <laughs> September is Spain. Okay, so he's sort of right. Okay. Night. Night. night All right. Night. See you later, Jackie. All right. So, uh, what a crazy show. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. No, it's all good. It's all good. I really I, I enjoyed it. It was just a, a, a good visit just hanging out with uh, Kelly. I, I mean, we like you said, we didn't have to stay on point very long because we were just visiting, which was great. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of good information there. And actually, it, well, like I said, he, he nailed it. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Okay. Who, how to get up here? Leonard Trigg. End of story. There you go. Yep. I mean, there was a little more than that, but I mean, you know. Well, now, I, and, uh, and when you come to know, Florida, there's more people I want to meet. Oh. When are you going to Florida, Ty? I don't know. Well, when that's. I, well, to I don't know. I don't know. That was another time. I would hap know? happily go there when anybody, anybody wants me, um, but I don't normally get down there. Okay. Um, Which means someone has to fly him down. He's not just going to fly down on his own dime. 
or, or you know, there's other ways to travel. But yeah, we need to help because it just yeah, yeah. yeah. See, that's the whole thing. I don't know. Oh, you should come down to my place. So, <laughs> someone asked Craig to teach right in Toronto. Okay. For a Saturday morning class. Right. It's an hour class. And like you do know I'm um, it's an eight hour round trip for me, Ooh, right? Ouch, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like yeah. and like and I go I li- and I know the person. I'm like, don't you dare do it for free. <laughs> I mean, they, they should be paying you something. And I understand the person was just kind of thinking, hey, let's all hang out together and stuff like that. That works when you're in the same town. Well, it's it funny because there's a couple places I get to because of work that I can teach, and we end up not doing stuff. I get to Colorado Springs, I get yeah. to um Yeah. All sorts of places. Okay. But, cool. You know. So hang out for a minute, and then uh, we're going to end this up. Uh, so, yep. guys, everybody, as always, please stay safe, stay sane. Uh, next week, we have uh, Guru Errol uh, mm. coming on board nice. uh, from the New York City. And then in, we're off a week, and then I've got Grandmaster uh, Carlos. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, he, he figured that. Okay. Dan, oh, Danny. It's in Florida, so come on. Are you there? Te- you're only there temporarily, right? Uh is that is that right, Danny? You're just there for a short period of time. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, or are you living there now? <laughs> he did say because yeah, it's a. Uh, um... Hey, I'll be down there March fifteenth through the twenty seventh, and I've got like a week of, I got in between time. You know, let me know where you're going to be, and I'll mm-hmm. if you're still down there, I'll come visit. Traveling. You're traveling, okay? How long are you going to be down there for? As we're about to say to That's sign right. off. Right. So I got Carlos. Uh, uh, Patalinghug coming. He is a grandmaster in um, in um, Doce Pares, studied directly from um, Don Cuesta. He is the U.S. Director of WeCAF. He will be on the twenty seventh. So we're beginning to we're beginning to oh, that's good, yeah. Break out of the Modern Ernie's Chronicles and start doing FMA Chronicles. As and you know, I've got some travel things the next two weeks, so yeah. we'll have to figure that out. But if you know, without me, it's fine. We'll we'll talk at the end of the. Okay. Well, you know, you if you can't see him, then you'll definitely see him at camp because you're coming up, right? Right. There you go. All right. Um, hey, Danny, if you're going to be down there, just direct direct message me. We'll go from there. And Is thanks, Zach, too. Yeah, thanks. All right. Listen, um, that's what's going on. Great having everyone on. As always, please stay safe, stay sane. This is Dr. Tim. And PG Ty. <laughs> I'm, I'm sleeping here already. Okay, Dr. Botting there. All right, there you go. Yeah. All right. And uh, we'll see you. In a, uh, we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.